views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome to Views from the Sideline. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill, and our special guest, my brother, Jordan Tysick. It's draft night. It's July 29th, and the Pistons have the number one overall pick. Who's excited? Can you say can you say that one more time, please? I just need you to <laughs> the Pistons repeat have that statement one the more time. number one overall pick which they have not had since 1970. 1970. Malik, do you know who that player was that they selected? I do not. Jordan, do you know who they selected? In 1970. Just take a guess. (laughs) I have no idea. Oh, and we have no winners. You could have said Jackie Moon. (laughs) (laughs) We have no winners on the podcast today. Bob Lanier was our last number one overall pick. Oh, it should turn in one of the only Piston cards. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Yes, we have another Pistons fan in the room <laughs> to witness the legendary moment that yeah. we're about to witness in about 30 minutes. Yeah, unfortunately, Chris wasn't able to make it uh, today. He's got wedding stuff that he's planning for, so I guess Absolutely. we'll give him a pass. Slightly more important than this, I guess. <laughs> but, Slightly. Yeah, you know, he's not committed enough. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we are live for this draft. Draft starts at 8 o'clock, so we figured we wanted to go on a little bit early, start talking about... You know, some of our mock draft stuff, maybe, you know, do our final mock draft, um, have any opinions. There's been a couple little trades here and there, and then there's been some swirling trade rumors that also may happen. There's been one big trade. Brody. One big trade. Well. (laughs) Big to Russ fans and LA fans. To Pistons fans, it's, it's all right. It's decent. My my I thing guess. I'm confused with that trade. Why is LeBron picking up another non shooter? Well, that that deal is not said and done. Uh, so come on, <laughs> it's, it, it's not said and done, but it's true though. Them. No, it's, it's what, not, are, what are the chances of it just blowing up? Well, in they're the, still like, trying the to work it out. Hours? Well, I mean, the Buddy Heald looked as well. Okay, so what everybody that is a good question. I don't know what happens. Well, to the what Buddy these Heald guys deal. are talking yeah. about right now is that. There's been rumors that Russell Westbrook will be traded to the Lakers uh, for Montrezl Harrell, Kyle Kuzma. The thing that they weren't, they're not able to figure out in KCP, the thing that they're trying to figure out right now is draft picks to go along with that trade. So that's where it's not completely finalized yet. And we'll have to kind of wait and see what happens for that. Um, But yeah, they're close on a deal. But the Lakers are also close on a deal for Buddy Heald that also included Montrose Harrell. So it seems like that disappeared as soon as the Russell Westbrook thing came up. Yeah. So yeah, I'm still wondering where that went. And I don't think yeah. anything's necessarily off the table uh, for that, but I just think it's people are, you know, they're throwing all uh, throwing out all their offers at the moment, trying to, you know, figure out what's going on. But um, yeah. So. We haven't really gotten to hear Jordan's opinion on the draft. Um, me and Malik have been talking about it here and there the last couple of weeks. Um, Jordan, what do you think? What do you think about this draft just in general? Because we've kind of said like it's it's obviously the top three, and then it gets <clears throat> it's a deep draft, but I don't know if it's like a generational draft. Like some people are comparing it, saying it's the best draft since two thousand three. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I don't know. Well, all, the all three draft was more top heavy than anything. There were some really good players afterwards, but it wasn't like a very long list. Mm-hmm. Like it was the Hall of Famers at the top, and then quality role players like at the end of the first and some in the second. Well, the thing about this draft that is really interesting to me is the G League guys, the Jalen Green and uh, 
the other cat supposed to go top five. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Kaminga. Yeah. It's like Jalen Green coming out of high school was wasn't he like top five in his class like yeah. all the way through? Yeah. It's pretty it's pretty strange. He he could end up being the best player out of the draft. I hate to say it. Uh, I've been high on Cade Cunningham all year, but it's interesting. And the foreign players, they dropped the foreign players were higher up, top three, top four, and then they dropped them off pretty heavy just as recently. Yeah. Um, I think that like kind of like interesting one right now, I think, is is Josh Kitty. We kind of talked about a little bit last week. Who I I'm not completely sold on him, honestly. I'm not either, especially no. for where he's projected right now to go to Memphis. Um, that seems like kind of an oddball. Um, kind of one of the biggest last minute risers, I would say, is Scotty Barnes. Um he's looking around four, five, six, that pick area. Whereas before he was more like seven or eight, but the last couple of days he's gained a lot of steam. So it'll be interesting to see if the top four guys stay the same or if Toronto maybe, you know, switches gears and does a Scotty Barnes pickup. So we we've heard there they might be sold on Jalen Suggs, which yeah. if they're looking to move Kyle Lowry would would make the most sense because mm. with Lowry out you need a guy to come right in. And I don't think there will be any better guy. Than Jalen Suggs because he's a proven winner. He's skilled. He's a floor general. He averaged like seventeen and seven on the second best team in college, mm -hmm. which says almost everything you need to know. Yeah. yeah, he's. I think he's around six five, which some people is say, say is undersized today, but a six five point guard is like more than good enough. Honestly, seeing how good of an athlete he is, and he's he's just so well rounded. Yeah, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't take anybody but Suggs at four. Honestly, but they could. Yeah. We we've seen crazier things happen in the draft. Yeah, no, I agree. Um another going back to the trades cuz this came in just before we started. Um the Pistons are going to trade Mason Plumley and the number 37 pick that they have tonight uh to Charlotte for the number 57 pick in the draft, which on paper sounds really weird. Um but in the end it's just a money save. Uh Pistons will have a lot of calorie, salary cap space next year for a very loaded uh, free agency period. So I think it's a smart move for down the line. Um, I wanted them to trade Mason Plumley a long time ago, <laughs> so I'm totally okay with it. But the, he started playing well. Even when he was playing well, you still wanted him gone. <laughs> yeah, because that increases his trade stock. That's where you trade him. Jordan Jordan is shaking his head. He he, he sounds like a Plumley guy over oh, here. Yeah. How did... Playmaker. <laughs> Best passing. Big Listen, man, he was he was had. he was throwing he was throwing them fake passes, yeah, making people you, fall. Why would no why look would you passes? Not want that coming off the bench, that Dunks. energy. He's a veteran, savvy. They could they could get a another decent veteran for cheaper, which is which is I I understand why they True. made this move. But also, Joey's not a fan of Jeremy Grant. I don't know if I'm 100 percent sold on him yet. That's my only thing. And I I told Molly we talked about this at length the one time, uh, for a while. Um, yeah, I. I just don't know where I see him at. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, he fits in with what they're trying to do right now, but he's not an overwhelming yeah. force. Yeah, that's and not I think let them excel. It, it'll really yeah. depend on what happens with um, Cade and how he develops, like in his rookie year. Because if he becomes a star, like I think Jeremy Grant is a great. Uh, I don't know if I can even put <laughs> Jeremy Grant as a second piece, to be honest. But there, there were a lot of contending teams that were trying to get him near playoff yeah. time. So yeah, they're really good teams. Were thinking he could be that for them if they could get him. But did a lot of those teams think that they're going to be? He was going to be their second best player because for most of those teams, maybe like, not second. Exactly. The he he was like most likely looked at as like an elite third option. And that's what kind of where I'm I'm drawing the line is like he's an in between two and three best player on a team scenario. So I it's it's hard to say. Um, oh yeah, our good friend Chris he is watching the podcast. I'm watching some of the comments. He did say that Plumley's a salary dump, and he doesn't think that Weaver is done dealing tonight. And I, I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Yeah, Listen, after last year, the first three or four moves Troy Weaver made last year, every Pistons fan was crying and complaining. Yeah, we were. Every, people were so confused, and I was like, "Let him make the moves, and let's see what happens." But and we then were, a few months later, everybody was. 
applauding. Well, we were also excited though that they were at least doing, doing something. something exactly. Instead of just sitting there. Exactly. And it just so happened that it it really worked out. So it was even better than you know what we expected. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I again, we're at that point where it's not we can't like deny Troy Weaver of what he's done yet. Like you can't you can't doubt what he's trying to do. I guess because it just seems like it makes sense. Um, what do you think is the, like the biggest question mark going into this draft? Like, Everything. We'll, after, we'll start with you, Malik. <laughs> Everything after the fourth pick is a question mark. If we're being honest, I mean, we're, we're expecting the top four picks to go a certain way. It could change, but K Cunningham, Jalen Green to the Rockets, Evan Mobley to the Cavs, and then Suggs to the Raptors makes the most sense and is the most likely thing. Everything after that, Scotty Barnes could go five. It's possible, but there are so many trades that could happen. Like they're like we've talked about before we started this. Some people are Franz Wagner as high as seven to the Warriors, <laughs> which on the Warriors he'd probably be a good contributor. Not bad. But yeah, they they have him as high as seven. Some people have Josh Giddy as high as like six or seven, which is crazy to me. But some people are crazy high on him. So yeah, everything after the top four picks is a like complete crapshoot. You. We have no idea what's going to happen. Like, who, who, what teams move up and down? Because there are teams like Memphis moved up to 10, and there are rumors that they still want to move up even higher. So, I, I don't know, man. Just that's the biggest question. What happens after four? Yeah. Because, yeah. So. Nobody knows. Jordan, you had any. I was just going to say, deeper in the first round, too, I feel like there's a lot of really good young guys that'll be there, too, so you never yeah. know how they're going to end up being. This could end up being a very talented draft. This this entire first round, I feel like... I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> not not like half of the first round, because that, that would be impossible for like half of the first round to pan out. But I feel like out of the 30 picks in the first round, like let's say like 11 or 12 out of the 30 could like be very quality, like a few, a, a few stars and a bunch of quality players out of the first round. I think it's very possible. Cause like you said, there's a ton of young talent, even between like 20 and 30, there are so many options for teams to go with and teams that are in really good positions that honestly don't even need certain guys can still add real high level talent if they need to or want to. Yeah. Well, those guys like we talked about before, like Cameron Thomas that are, supposed in the 20s but he could easily be like a top 15 player in this draft yeah him sharif cooper from auburn could go in the 20s mm -hmm. jalen johnson who opted out at duke there's some people that don't even have him in the first round and he was like a top almost five player in the country yeah. going into duke so yeah it's there are a lot of spots dudes can go and it's really unpredictable and then i like to say the uh the big 10 second round um all like the top Big Ten players, whereas a lot of people know the Big Ten was pretty much the best conference in college basketball last season. All their best players are basically in the second round for the most part. Some might go undrafted, which is crazy. Yeah. But so you got guys yeah. like Io Dusunmu, Isaiah Livers, Aaron Henry, Jordan's boy, Luca Garza. They're all out there. Luca Garza is definitely going undrafted. I'm sorry, Jordan. I know he probably will. <laughs> he's but he's not going. He's not. I bet he drafted. could contribute. Hey, somewhere. me and me and Malik made arguments for Luca Garza and Cameron Crutwig next in tonight's Listen. draft. Okay. Not that it's realistic. Yeah, yeah. He but. didn't hear my argument. I said, you might think this is crazy. I think if Cameron Crutwig got into great NBA shape, he could be a he would be a much better pro than Luca Garza. Because he he's a great passer, yeah. I he, called he him can also or, score in the post. I called him a baby Jokic. He can't he can't shoot like Luca Garza, but he he does things better than like everything else in the game. He does better than Luca Garza. Luca Garza just a better scorer. Luca Garza's post game is got miles on. Him. But but that that's all he has though. <laughs> Luca Luca Garza is just slow. Yeah, that's his biggest. That's another hindrance. Cam Crowley isn't <laughs> isn't fast, it's, but he's not he's as slow quick, as Luca Garza. He's quicker. He has quicker feet. Yes, yeah, I agree. Luca has more size though. Six yeah. eleven, slow post game. Somebody will give him a but chance. Can shoot. But right. I I don't know what team is gonna give him real minutes and say go out there. It is gonna be tough. And, yeah. Just the NBA is getting so fast. Exactly. Right. Yeah, and that's where I said he. He maybe could contribute off somebody's bench or something like that. That's what I was thinking. Like, just but a, it's 
Tenth man. It's been, <laughs> tenth man sounds about right. Yeah, tenth man. Yeah, give him, give him a nice like five minutes at the end of games, maybe. Yeah. But see what he can do. It's definitely, it's definitely going to be tough for him. Um, Want to go back to a couple of the little trades that happened um, earlier on in the day. Landry Shamit got traded uh, to the Phoenix Suns in exchange for basically nothing. Um, Calling Javon Carter nothing is hilarious. I mean, he's... And disrespectful. He's, but he's it a, was Javon Carter in a what, pick. Thank you very much. He's what, 23-year-old and he's a 40 year old looking body? Like, he, 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 was, he was bald in like his like third year at West Virginia. Yeah. He's been old for a while, but he can he can play a little. He's got that Sam Young vibe to him. <laughs> Sam Young looked like he was 35 when he entered the NBA. Exactly. That's a little different. But um Landry so, Shamit ain't much either. Yeah, but he's he's Oh, an, come on. Now. He's, he's an upgrade. Landry Shamit is a really good shooter. He's an upgrade, Rogue. <laughs> you can't say that he's not an upgrade though for them. As, he, for as, them. An upgrade. as a shooter, yeah. Yeah. He's going to yeah. be a dependable shooter off the bench for them. You guys think the Suns are going back again to finals? I hope so. I don't nah. know though. It's gonna be hard. No, not I don't think it's definitely gonna be harder. I for think them. healthy Nuggets. It's hard to stop. Maybe with, you know, with Jamal Murray, they have a good chance. But like the Lakers will be back. The Clippers. I, 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 we don't know what Kawhi is doing. That's a big thing. Yeah, Kawhi. We nobody can ever know what he's thinking at any time. He could he could be like out of the door, like completely out with the Clippers now. But he could also be in. We have no idea. I also think. Um, the crazy one and it's going into this next trade is like what in the world Cleveland's trying to do because the last couple drafts draft, they've been drafting guards. Uh, they got Colin Sexton, they got Darius Garland, then they got uh, Okoro last year, but now they just traded for Ricky Rubio. Three point they, guard system, right? Jordan, <laughs> that could work. <laughs> it's what Ricky Rubio has been known to be a part of his entire career. It seems like, did you see what he just did though for Spain? Oh, well, he's, that's, he's been balling. Shooting. That's what he's I. He's been balling. <laughs> that's what I told Olympics. Malik. I said Cleveland's been watching the Olympics. I guess that's too much, that's <laughs> but uh, a little too much. So the thing about that is, does that mean? Do you guys think that Colin Sexton is getting traded maybe tonight? Yeah, if you draft for, Rick, I mean, if you trade Rick, for Ricky Rubio, I mean, I, I don't see how they keep Colin Sexton because if you bring in a veteran point guard like him, last time it happened in Phoenix. They traded for Ricky Rubio and got rid of like all the young dudes, and they kept Devin Booker and just like brought in veterans. So that was our, strange. Our power just flickered. <laughs> oh, literally, <laughs> we were on backup nice. generators. That's the fun part about okay. being live. Nice. <laughs> I just I you just never know what will happen. That's so crazy. <laughs> anyway, that just threw us off. I so think Ricky Rubio, <laughs> we honestly might be on generators right now. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, or or it's restarting all the AC and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> like I was saying, <laughs> you trade for Ricky Rubio, you got two young point guards. One of them is going. I mean, that's that has to be the assumption. You don't keep both of them and say, Ricky, you're a part of our plan too. <laughs> so you're choosing Darius Garland over Colin Sexton. I, I, uh, Colin Sexton is the more attractive trade option, honestly. Right now. Yeah. And he, apparently there there's a rift between him and Cleveland. It seems like at least there's... that's that's not old news. Right. With with every star player they have. Yeah. So I don't know. And there's also talks that they want to get rid of Jared Allen, which doesn't make sense either, because I think you could pair him with an Evan Mobley. They stole him from Brooklyn. Yeah. Literally. And now they're just gonna ship him off. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's not set in stone, but there's been talks about yeah. it. It would be ridiculous. It would be pretty, very Cleveland of them to do, but. They yeah. they need to try to shake some of that off. The Browns are looking good now. They they got to get their stuff together. They can't be the one horrible Cleveland franchise left. Yeah. Like but without LeBron they haven't shown much of anything. So Do you guys think any other like big names? Like we brought up Russell Westbrook. Do you guys think Russ is going to get traded tonight? Do you think Ben Simmons gets traded tonight? I hope Ben Simmons. Gets Do you think there's any possibility of any other big trade? Are are you a fan of Ben Simmons no. at all? No. <laughs> Completely out on him no, after no, those playoffs. No, I think he's. I think he's. He's a solid player, but you're telling me you can't. You can't make a free throw. Listen, man. He he is a. I can't say that he is mentally. Yeah. No. I <laughs> messed up. I feel. Yeah. I anyone that's I, that's bad. I think he definitely has had some mental issue now after the ridicule from the playoffs. Like yeah. that was. 
pretty brutal. And like it was tough on the guy, obviously, but the other teams, some, some of it got a little crazy. The other teams asking prices for Ben Simmons are, <laughs> I understand because he's an All Star player, but That's it looks like he just he doesn't want to be great. That is the biggest yeah. problem. He has Hall of Fame talent, but he doesn't want to be great. And you're asking for like. They're asking teams to like give up half their team for Ben Simmons to give, to give up their franchise. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's ridiculous. I saw I, because of that. I'm thinking there's a chance they might not make a trade tonight because Philly's just asking for so much. much. Yeah, I, I think it, the that will take a little bit of a while. But one hurt that I heard because you know the Thunder are throwing out Shea Gilgis Alexander in the number six overall pick a lot recently. Um, they tried to get the Pistons with they, it. They said yeah, no. <laughs> like you send Ben Simmons to OKC and then. You know, good that's, luck. That's a good way to just like <laughs> reset him because you just go to a, a small market that's rebuilding. You rebuild around him. Maybe it gives him a new, a refresh that he needs. Yeah. But. Wherever he goes, I hope he goes to a bottom feeder franchise because he <laughs> he needs something to like change his mindset in the way he looks at the NBA right now because he's he's been given everything for should, a very long time. He should see a sports psychologist. That too. That too. Yeah, so I don't know. And then um, the Warriors are another one of those teams that are in it uh, for a lot of – they've had a lot of talk apparently between Steph and Clay that they want to be championship contenders. Uh, Bradley Beal has been thrown out there as a name. But Bradley Beal sounds like he wants to stay in Washington, which doesn't make sense to me. It, you're, uh, you're supposed to say something like that when you're – He's he just seems like a good guy. Yeah. He's, he's not going to look at Washington and be like, I don't want to be with any of you anymore. He's he's gonna be a good guy and be like I love Washington. Yeah. They've always been good to me, but he t- deep down he knows <laughs> yeah. he knows it's about it's time. time for him to yeah to go to a winning yeah organization. Yeah, so I'll be curious if if um, the Warriors because they have two first round picks if they'll end up getting trading out um, from those seven or fourteen spots will be. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm surprised they haven't already because the Warriors need players to help them get back into the playoffs and make a run now. Mm-hmm. And keeping those picks, I mean, it's possible they could find guys that can help them immediately, but it'd be much better if they just traded for like for like somebody like Bradley Beal. Yeah, package those picks and Wiseman and like Wiggins. Right, it'd be much better. But I have a question for you. Okay, Joey, <laughs> throw it at me. So you you brought up Josh Giddy. Yeah. That's the one international guy we brought up. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's not the best international prospect. Ooh. Let's talk about Alper and Shingun for a minute. Okay. The Turkish monster. Monster. He's not really a monster, <laughs> but mm-hmm. he's 18. Mm-hmm. He was MVP of the Turkish League at 18. He... I, I I don't know why I want to like make some Jokic comparison, but that's ridiculous. I I shouldn't compare any player to Jokic. He's too special. He has a polished post game for an 18 year old. Mm-hmm. He shoots 81 from the line. Not a very good three point shooter, but he shoots 81 percent from the line, which means he could get better. He's a good enough athlete and a good enough defender, but he's like six nine. Yeah, he's not like very strong. He's like two thirty five, two forty. Hmm. I feel like he's clearly like a better prospect than Josh Giddy, and I don't know why everybody's falling in love with Josh Giddy so much. Huh. I understand he's a six six point, yeah, what, whatever I, people I think. think. That I think it's the all around idea of Josh Giddy. I've watched, I I have done some research since, um, and I want to say that people think that they can fix his shooting because that's where it seems like he struggles. But he's good at getting the basket. He's crafty. He's a pretty good playmaker. And I think they just like the idea of that young talent. And like Luca's kind of paved the way for a lot of these guys. I'm happy you brought finish that thought and then I'll comment. I'm happy you brought that up. Well, I'm just saying that's like kind of the reason I think a lot of these international players are starting to get the hype around them is if they seem like they can do all these all around abilities and they're young and they just look like they're NBA ready. Also, I don't know. I think people are just going to compare them to Luca, and that's that's what they're going to go off of. Uh, I don't want to bash Josh Giddy too much. Mm-hmm. He does have talent. He does have size. He's a good passer. He's a good enough finisher. 
He's a pretty like average to below average shooter. He doesn't have much game if we're being honest. Like, <laughs> I mean, on, honestly, his his handle is okay. His scoring ability is okay. Like that Luca thing you brought up. I think that's a big reason why people think he can be great because mm-hmm. he has size and he can pass and he's a good point guard for his age. But Luca, like Luca had game out of this world when he came into the NBA, he stepped into the NBA and said scoring overseas was, was harder. Right. That's how good Luca was. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Josh Giddy. He's, he's not on that level. <laughs> he's, he's not on that level. Like I, I don't, I don't ever see him being like that level of a score. Mm-hmm. I can see him being a really good playmaker, but besides that, I don't see anything in his game that like that says even like star to me. Yeah, I, I mean, is, that's just my opinion. I don't know. It's tough because like you just don't get these these tall point guard developmental type players. All too often, I know you're getting They're becoming them. more normal than usual. Right? No, I, I get that taller they, point they are. Um, but the same at the same time, I'm I'm looking at his his draft uh, analysis, and it's like he's basically six eight, six nine. He's the third youngest player in this draft, uh, and it says that he's grown three inches in three inches in the last three years, which means he could still grow a little bit. So I think there's like. People are thinking in the back of their minds. And I know this goes to the, the analytic analytic people or, you know, your combine people that you love so much. But it's just sometimes it's just they want to be able to mold somebody. And you got to think now, too, Giannis just won a championship. And look how he looked coming oh, into the league. Oh, my God. I'm not comparing gotta, him to that. Yeah, but, you, you, but I'm giving the, you that you idea of like. Giannis and Luca cannot be. The the like the examples for what these dudes can but look become. At, look at all the foreign players that have came in the last four or five years. Most Luke Luca and Giannis are special. Most of them though have been extremely good, way better than people thought. Kristaps Porzingis, he could. Stay I was healthy. a Kristaps. I, I was a Kristaps believer, but he's he's had too many injuries now. He's not the same player he was his first few years, which is disappointing. But there's there's been some busts too, like Mario Hazonia. I was okay. big on him. And Dunked on Giannis. <laughs> he stepped did over him. In Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I, I loved every minute of it. I cheered him on. But Mario. Gave him a little bit yeah. of a flex. Mario is almost out of the league at this point. Like, uh, I'd imagine. Davidas Servitas. <laughs> Anybody? He's, he's a piston, so I'll, I'll cheer him on. But like, Luka and Giannis can't be. Those, the Bo- those can't the be. The Bogdanovich the brothers. But the, the they weren't were they they weren't drafted were they? I think I think the one in Utah was. I don't think uh, yeah, the younger one. The, no, I think the younger one was Bogdan. Yeah, Oyan yeah. wasn't. But I like they, I don't, I don't like, think he was. Those guys were like second rounders though. Yeah, like we're I, we're talking I, I about like the the international guys that get drafted, drafted high. high. There's a few Darko. of them that have ended up. <laughs> <laughs> now you go into the complete opposite of the worst. <laughs> But, but I'm just saying, there people for the longest time would always compare him to Darko. They did. It, that was when when Chris Tapps came out of the draft. That's what a lot that of people were big, doing, and it was yeah, unfair because t- his talent was clear to me, and people were just kept saying Darko. It was ridiculous. Well, we'll see. I I don't know much. I don't know anything about these foreign players. <laughs> <So> I'm <gonna> be 100 <laughs> percent honest. A lot of people don't. So honestly, honest yeah. Time. Well, and some of the people that you know have been dogging Josh Giddy is like. How did he not make the Australian national team? That's kind of like, I mean, part of it is that he wanted to sit out. So it's, but people are saying that like, he's not, he probably, he might not have even made the Australian national well, team. Anyway, ben Simmons made the team, didn't he? He, no, he didn't no, play. He, and people are wondering why he didn't play. Mental so. break. He's, he's Pro- probably, play. So probably. Smart. But I mean, the Australian national team is really strong. So if, I mean, if he's playing that type of competition, and oh, I, th- I think one of the big things, too, actually, um, one of his Australian teammates, Matisse Thibel, was one that said, hey, this guy was this guy was tough to guard. So if you're getting like possibly one of the best defenders in the NBA to say this guy's legit. That helps his case. So Listen, I don't know what else to say. 
as the draft is getting ready to start, I'm I'm about to ask you a quick question, Jordan. Oh, I'm about to give you a draft profile of Josh Giddy. All right. And see if you would take him I, as a top. See 10. if I draft okay, him in so the lottery. He's six seven. He's eighteen. One of the best players in the Australian league. First few things. Next, very average shooter. Not very athletic. Just a decent finisher around the rim. Decent handle. But he's young, he's tall, and he can play make. Would you take him top 10? I, I'm going to answer with a question. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Were the last, weren't the last two people from the Australian League, LaMelo Ball and RJ Hampton? LaMelo Ball was from California. And <laughs> but he's didn't been like they a... go play in the Australian League? So that's the talent that they're playing. Talent that they're playing against. So Melo just happened to go to Australia. He was going to end up being this way. That's true. No matter what. But I'm just saying, if he's tall, lengthy, and he's 18, they're going to work with him. He'll eventually be acceptable in the NBA, whether he's 3 and D or just defense. <laughs> he'll he'll get minutes. So I could see drafting him early just off that. But I like I said, I don't know anything about him. going off that. I'd draft him in it. Top 10? Yeah, I mean, yeah. If I'm the 10th pick and I know... After these guys, <laughs> after okay. after the guys I know, it does sound like Malik. Your phone is ahead of the computer. Okay, wow, Jaylen, let me turn it down a little. <laughs> Jalen yeah, Green's hair is bit. phenomenal. Did you see his suit? He has a, <laughs> he has on a gray sparkly suit with bell bottom pants. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you support the bell bottoms. I'm all, I'm I'm all not, about I'm the draft suit. Wow, the draft setup looks nice this year. Yeah, it's a good. It's honestly more people than I expected. Yeah. Should they even put the Pistons on the clock? Let's be honest. I wish we they... got some Pistons fans in the <laughs> hey. house though. Except he's wearing a Blake Griffin jersey. You can burn that. You know, sometimes I wish that they wouldn't like give them just like like the first pick. They've had months to decide what they want to do with it. So just why does the first pick need to be on? Well, on the clock. They they until I guess like for trades. until like two days ago they were reporting that Jalen Green had a great workout and the Pistons loved him. Yeah. Like that's what I that's those are the one things I hate when yeah. I, I've been a hundred percent sure that they were taking K for like the past three months. I just like seeing everything in Pistons colors here on the strap. <laughs> like, it's good to it's good to see. I don't know if that was exactly on purpose, but yeah, they threw a Pistons logo earlier out there, but. It's the it's the NBA logo. Yeah, we're gonna too. we're talking. <laughs> just just go Pistons. Yeah, everything's just, Detroit just tonight. It, everything's for us tonight for once. Malik, are you are, are you streaming on uh, ESPN? Yep, on the ESPN app. You know, though, I will say I I'm on am, ABC. I want to see if I am a fan of Scotty Barnes. Yeah, Scotty Barnes. I I tell people Scotty Barnes is what people think Draymond Green is. With a lot, with a lot more he's like offensive a, well, style. He's he's, a, he's six ten. He's a he's, he's more athletic. Easy point and, forward, like he's exactly. smooth with the ball. He yeah. can bring it up every single time. He's a Draymond know. Green. He's more talented with athleticism, with the, exactly, and tall and yeah, bigger. He's, yeah, he's, which is yeah more valuable. Yeah, he's he's a solid. Player. Which is yeah, Draymond Green is a three time All Star. Why? How do you guys feel Who though knows? about all the old guys like uh, like uh, Corey Duarte and? Chris Duarte, yeah, Corey, <laughs> Corey Kispert. <laughs> oh yeah, I was mixing all them. You up. Mix them. All, all the guys, all the guys from the tournament that are now somehow going to be drafted so, first. Corey Kispert and, is also some people have him in the lottery, which is too high. Yep, I saw that. He's he might be the best shooter in the draft. So I really like him. Chris Duarte is my favorite. Like outside of like the stars, Chris Duarte is my favorite player in the draft. I think he, like any team, I think you put him in and he's like contributing from the jump. Yeah. Really good shooter, good defender. Yeah, I'm a big Chris Duarte fan. There's your guy Bob, Bob Lanier, Saint Bonaventure. Are you talking about him? Oh yeah, last number one overall pick for Pistons. I probably should have known that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I didn't know it, so I probably should have known that. I had no idea. My guess would have been Dave Bing. Like, <laughs> I the, thought the, about the, it until the few he said, great Pistons before the 1980s. Until he said 1970, I was thinking Dave Bing, and then I was like, "That was that's way after." Since days. 2008, one winning season, zero playoff. Dang. Oh my God! Look look at that young core. Oh my God. Yeah. So the big fan of Isaiah Stewart. Right now on the on the live stream on ABC or ESPN, that's what we're watching. Kind of keeping track. We'll play audio um, when. Sp- when picks start coming in, but they're kind of recapping the Pistons, yep. what the Pistons look like. We got Jalen, Jalen Rose up there getting ready. 
Uh, what's your guys' timer at on the picks? Uh, 153. Holy moly. <laughs> How far are you behind? ABC is so far behind. Get over here with oh, man. Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> My least favorite. Big, <laughs> big perk on the panel. Oh, ABC has got Jalen Rose up there. I'm going to try to refresh it. But you guys might just have to tell me when it's coming up, and then I'll play the audio. It might, okay. it might probably, just work out that way. We might even be behind television. Oh, wait. We're behind, we're behind the regular, the regular <laughs> Everyone, thing. Everyone's like, he's already been That's drafted. <laughs> ABC being that behind is crazy. Yeah, I'm that just at weird. 150 right now. Yeah, they're showing Cade Cunningham highlights right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I just. All right. Did they say that the pick is in? Pistons playoffs? Not yet. Oh. First I saw it in the background, I thought, but... Can the Pistons make the playoffs in the first, first season? season? I don't think no. so. No. I kind of hope not. Exactly. If if they were, like... If they were even close to, like, see, competing I'm, for the the play-in spot, see, I'm that, gonna, that would be very encouraging. This is me and Joey had a little bit of a dispute about this. I think we take it. If we can... If we can get it, I say go for it. Get Cade playoff experience right off the start. If I mean, he shows to if be they that get, kind of player. I won't be angry if they get it. Like, get in at the eight, and there's no, there's obviously no chance they'll win, but they, like, play tough. Yeah, they, I'd be very encouraged, yeah. But, I, honestly, I, I want this process to be slow. They have pickers in now. What do you we mean? all know what this is. Space Jam 3 coming 20 <laughs> years You want to turn now. Jordan's uh, mic up just a little bit? Is he on three or one? He's on three. three. Just a little. I just turned it up a little. Okay. How's it going now? How's it now? That's better. A little bit better? Yeah. Just wanted to. <laughs> Camera's on. Physical tools, check. Shooting, check. Feel for the game, check. Defensive versatility, check. Intangibles, check. Hey. <laughs> check. I just got, it just shows pick is in. I'm already yep. getting excited. I'm getting Josh Giddy over here. <laughs> you guys can Ba-dum. tell me. You guys Jokes. can tell me when they come to the podium. And then I'll I'll turn up the audio for it. But um, it's crazy to think that we're gonna get the number one pick. Exactly. I I don't I don't know what to in. I don't know what to it say just, right now. It definitely cause... just feels weird overall. Um, this is yeah, because it sets us up for a future that we didn't think that we would have. Yeah. Let let's let's reflect on the draft picks of the past like ten eleven years for a second compared to just let's, last year's. Let's 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 go let's go Whoa. Austin Day. Whoa. Austin Day. Whoa. Jonas Jonas Jarebko, ladies and gentlemen. First hey, Swedish Jonas, player. Jonas gave us some some decent time. Greg Monroe, Moose. Greg Monroe, that was not my favorite pick in the world. <laughs> Listen, we That was tough. Got Andre Drummond. He was an all star for a little bit. KCP, decent selection. Some of the players what? we could have selected though. Yeah, that's always the that's fun one. It, which I mean, you know, you can never look at it Kate like that. Kate Cunningham but is a Detroit Pistons. Especially that Woo! We have arrived. That um, thank you. What you gonna call it? Case we are here. President. All right. Oh my God! I can't even can't even tell you how excited. With the first pick in the 2021 NBA yeah. draft, the Detroit Pistons select Cade Cunningham. Woo! Bravo Pistons. Let's go. Troy Weaver. Look look what happens when you get a guy in that knows what he's doing. Thank you. Stuff like this. Things start going in your favor. Big hug. I didn't know he had a two year old daughter. Huh. Yeah, that was That was in one of his uh pre draft things. Get your buff. Oh, he on, also Kate. is a vegetarian if you didn't know. Vegan. Yeah, I saw the vegan. vegan. No, I said he's vegan. He serious. was a, veg- a vegan. Oh, so he's a really? vegetarian. Okay. He was ve- vegan. All black suit. He, he's all about business, man. This is get your this hair is fantastic. Buffs, this is phenomenal. But yeah, he said that he, like the most important person for him to be there with him at draft night, he said was his daughter. Even though he said like you know she's only two years old, she can't she doesn't really understand the magnitude of the moment. But she, he said that he thought it would be really cool to be able to have that. 2021 NBA draft, man. Welcome to the Pistons. Big Sean? Huh. All right, welcome to your future. We here. Now let's get it. <laughs> Shot creation. Big Sean in. Nice pass. When was the last? Oh, my God. Getting a little. Oh, Jesus. NBA they comparison. compared him Luka to Luka. Luka. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, again, when you have those. I, I compared him to a poor man's Luka, which isn't crazy. That's the thing, though. The poor you, man's. When you have those. You know, those tall point guard yeah. type guys that can do a little bit of everything. I mean, at this point, you're going to get you're gonna get compared to Luka. 
I don't compare him to Chris Middleton. I'm not They're just saying when he did the shooting. I don't. I don't agree. Hey, Chris Middleton that's is a, a Pistons draft serious pick. highlight. He was. He was. But he was gone. Grand he was gone. Drive. He was player. gone very soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he didn't. Poor guy. He didn't get much time on the Pistons, but then I mean, <laughs> nope, not poor guy. He just got a ring. <laughs> He's been on the Bucks for eight years. So. He could have been a part the of the Red this Ben rebuild. Wallace jersey. That man is repping. Yeah, he's a real fan. That's awesome. What a time it's to awesome be to alive! See some Pistons wow. jerseys somewhere. Oh, so okay. what do you what do you guys think this means for the Pistons' future? It's bright for the first time in. Jordan thinks they can make a playoffs man. right away. Me and Malik are more like a year away. We need one more year. I feel like one more building year. I think I think if we do one more building year, it'd be very good if we can get another lottery pick out of it. Because if we do one more building year, yes, we we could possibly get another lottery pick. We also get Cade another his first year under his belt, and that leads into the big free agency pool, where we'll have salary cap money. Where also we could get people to come to play with Cade, potentially. Yeah, honestly, I I don't want them to go for like a big superstar. I want them to go for like a guy that's like coming off his first contract and is looking like he could be a star. I don't I don't want any huge guys that can just speed up the process. Like you said, Mm -hmm. I want this to be something they, they've been bad for so long. There is no need to try and do like the New York process of all we need is a superstar to be good. That's not, that's not how you do it. They see now they got a good coach and a good core in New York. And now they're playing good basketball. They'll need to just rush for superstars and try to do something crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's, Again, it's it's hard to say because we've never seen a number one pick. Exactly. A lot of people haven't seen a number one pick. So for the Pistons to get it, and I, I think Cade was kind of the clear number one. I know it got murky as it went on, but I still think he was the clear number one. To get a guy like that for Detroit is huge, especially when Whoa, oh, he's bumping up. up. Let's go, Cade. Oh, we. I don't know what's happening. He's in. <laughs> He put the buffs on, Joey. Put the buffs on. He uh, said, I'm all the way he got, in He Detroit. got the black shades on. He's got the all black suit. He is He is. He is, he is, he is Detroit right now, Joey. He's, he's styling. Ready. He is embracing the city. I'm excited, Joey. Well, that's what I was saying. I feel like that's like the biggest that thing. Was a, that was a big salute to the city. If right he... There. Oh, you're ready. I'm buffed up now. Which camera I'm looking at? I'm in this one. Yeah, buffed you're up. in this one right here. Detroit, I'm all the way in. Buffed Detroit up. Pistons, I'm all Let's the way go. in. Let's do it. Congratulations. I hope they got Dwayne Casey a pair too when he first showed up. Joey, I might get you a pair of buffs as a as a wedding present. Okay. I might, I might have to do it. Maybe I will. <laughs> on your <laughs> well, <laughs> on your wedding day. All right. Fair enough. But yeah, I, I, honestly, I think that's kind of like the biggest thing is that like Cade feels like he's buying into Detroit. Exactly. And like we've said it before, to be able to play for Detroit, you have to buy in. That's like the only way you're going to get the best out of a player is they have to buy into this culture because we will back him if he buys in. Like we discussed yeah. with Blake Griffin. The city's behind it. The city got behind Blake Griffin that year. He he gave it yeah. everything. And then we gave him up. And then he gave up. And we up. threw him in the trash. No, and then he you, gave You up. can't get mad at him for that. I can't stand Blake Griffin. Well, are you, you can't be serious. Can't are you, Malik are you tried serious? to say that to me too. This man gave up on the city of Detroit. He should give. He should give some money back. He Jordan, should donate half it, of that salary it, it, back to this. the city. If you were stuck in the middle of a rebuilding process, and you the 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 first year they brought him in, his job was to drag them to the playoffs, and he did it, and he gave it his everything. He was hurt in that playoff series, and he still gave it his everything. Oh, I don't then mean, they just flipped the script to a rebuild, and they don't really like. He's not involved in any part of it. All right, you guys got to wait. Like, I can hear it on yours, but you got to wait like 20, 30 seconds because that's when it's going to come up on the computer. Ooh, look at that. Things good, things going. But, yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, he's they got they You know, you, the Rockets pick is in. Yeah. yeah. We're just waiting for – I'm just waiting for Adam Silver there, to come out. Go. Yeah, come on. Then. Just so we can play the, the audio. The Houston Rockets pick. But here's Adam Silver. <laughs> With the second pick in the 2021 NBA draft – the Houston Rockets select Jalen Green from Merced, California, <laughs> yeah. with the light blue blazer. Yeah, he should have came out with that suit. That hair is amazing, oh, though. It's phenomenal. He's, he's a Cali kid. He's, All right. Yeah. So there it is, Jalen yeah. Green. Jaylen. The unicorn. Jalen Green and, and Kevin Porter. 
That's the future for the Rockets. That's that's a that's scary. A, that's a super explosive, very skilled two and three. Yeah, especially very. now that they they seem like they are all in on Kevin Porter Jr. Um, we knew the talent last year in the draft for him. Uh, he had some mishaps here and there, but I mean, it seemed like towards the end of the season he got it together. Yeah, Houston now all of a sudden has a really strong young core. Christian they got Wood. Kevin Porter, Jalen Green now. They got uh, Kenya Martin Jr. Exactly. Uh, Christian, yeah, Wood Christian Wood is like Wood their is star there. now, which is crazy. Yeah. Although they that got Jalen Green, they got Kevin Porter had a fifty point game this past season. Right. Like that can't be understated. They they have serious talent coming to the Houston. Houston fans should be excited. Yeah. Because I mean, they'll have a reason to come to game. They they might lose a lot, but they're going to put up some points, and they're they're going to be a lot of highlights. I hope Jalen Green's be a lot in the dunk dunks. contest this year. Up to if he isn't, that would be a complete. They usually go for the super athletic rookies. Yeah, he should and guys like this. Yeah, Zion getting it too. He Maybe should, he should. <laughs> Listen, the, the the dunk contest is a whole other conversation. But they talked about there's yeah. a bunch of dudes that jumped over 41 inches at their combine. Yeah, Keon Johnson broke the record. I think it was like 48, which yeah. is insane. But Jalen Green was not one of those 41 plus guys. But he's also six eight. Yeah, but he's, he's bigger. Yeah, he's, he's still eyes at the rim when he takes off. Right, so it's, <laughs> it, it really doesn't. He's matter. flashy, but it's just it just tells you like, like we were talking about earlier, the athleticism in doesn't today's NBA vers- versatility. It's just kind of crazy. Yeah, he he's still a little raw, but what he what he showed in the G League games is what like changed my tune about him, especially in, in their playoffs. Yeah, that's right. big. Before Come, we get- coming out of high school, I thought. I wasn't in on him, but he he got a lot better in those G League games. Before we get too far off off topic here, Blake Griffin does not get to escape the season. Oh my <laughs> God! We okay. So like I was saying, yo, people, he owes it to the people because they're paying their for what hard, he did. They're that paying wh- their hard earned dollars to go see him play for what he, he did that he's whole sitting season. Sitting on the bench for two years, healthy. He gave Detroit everything he had. I, he I gave won, Detroit everything one, he had. Season. One run because that's all they were. That's all they deserved. <laughs> we need. We need more. That's all they deserved. And then they dump him. He hasn't dunked in two years. They throw him an alley oop the very first like five minutes he's in the game. Come Listen, on, man. He did. That's he, garbage. He didn't go the Kevin Love route and start whining and complaining on the court. And start yeah, being instead, a baby. Instead, he, he just he instead played. he just load managed himself for nothing <laughs> for for the next for another team. I don't mind that. If, oh, man. if you are, I just if, find you are that so disrespectful. if you are a veteran star player stuck in a position like that, I don't mind you not giving it everything why, you have. The the Pistons don't owe him the money. The Clippers owe him the money. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the Pistons. They that's made not, the move. Oh, that's on, that's on the Pistons. I I respect Blake for what he did that one season, dragging them. They weren't a playoff team, and he took no. them there. Amen. Just for us to. Waste a bunch of money. <laughs> no, I'm just watching you guys rant over there about Blake Griffin. A trade is official, Joey. Oh, we got a trade? I think you know which one. Let me check the uh, Twitter verse. I'm on Twitter as well. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Yep. So I told you it was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, we kind of figured. What, are they going to both get a triple-double? <laughs> <laughs> Triple-doubles all around. But the Lakers and Wizards have agreed on the trade for Russell Westbrook. Yep. So I got my wish. Russ is going to the Lakers to play with LeBron, which I thought would be hilarious. You, you, you want it to blow up in their I faces. I am ready for it's it to blow to. up. They're, it's not going to blow up in their faces. It would be like if AI joined up with some other. What great. do people but, but always. Here, but here's the thing. He's playing with LeBron. Okay, but he's that's play, what... He's playing with LeBron. LeBron is going to make it work. But what does LeBron need? He needs shooters around him. That's what we proved time they're, in and time they're out. Still gonna try, or, they're still going to try is, to find shooters. LeBron's going to turn to the shooter. Maybe I mean, his, his jumper played, is, his Russ jumper played, is approved played, over over yeah, time. Oh yeah. I, I give I give LeBron my stamp of approval on his jump shot. It does yeah. give him the chance to play more off ball, but at the same time, it's just like I just feel like right now they are clogging the paint. Yeah, they need to get rid of Drummond because Russ is taking all those yeah. rebounds. <laughs> yeah, you have no use they, for Drummond. Well, they they have they're both, to, they're they kind of have to guys. keep him though because they just gave up Montrezl Harrell. Yeah, so. That's also the problem. They need, they need, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. The, the Andre Drummond element is the really weird part. Did you guys get your pick? Yep. Yep. Okay. Andre Drummond's up. I had to refresh to 
get back it's, to it's, within 30 seconds. But so, Spoiler, it's going how we thought. I know. I know. I figured. Yeah. See, I like this pick a lot. I just, oh, I'm just i sad he's going to Cleveland. Exactly. <laughs> very it's, sad. This is exactly what Cleveland needs, but what are they going to do with him? Ruin his career. I mean, if having Ricky Rubio as a point guard is good for him, but yeah. they, they still got to figure out what they want to do with Colin Sexton. Him and Jared Allen would be a great four and five combo, but yeah, and I think, I hope, I guess that they they keep that, you know, that they they stick with Evan Mobley, yeah, alongside Jared Allen. I also feel like that's kind of the best, the best option that they have, but we'll see. Um, I I also think that it helps them getting Ricky Rubio, because if they really don't like Colin Sexton. Ricky Rubio is that guy that's a playmaker and he can set up Evan Mobley to be the centerpiece along with Jared Allen. They can make some nasty pick and rolls. Darius Garland can move more to a shooting guard than he actually even has already and just keep shooting. Cause he's a great shooter. And then, it, you know, it just seems like it, it would fit their mold of what they want to do a little bit better rather than Colin Sexton. You know, the rumors are that he's just a ball hog. So, if they want to get more involved play, that's I mean that's some good moves for them. Uh, I I don't think it's that Cleveland doesn't like him. I think he's if if Colin Sexton didn't play that way, they might not have won like twelve games this past season. Mm-hmm. They needed Colin Sexton to be high usage and score twenty four points a game because he has that type of ability. Yeah. But honestly, I I see it more like bring bring in Ricky Rubio to be a mentor for Darius Garland and show him how to be. Darius Garland understands the scoring part, but the playmaking part is what he needs to understand more. Yeah. And if he's if he's going to be that level of a point guard and if Cleveland's going to keep him, he needs to learn that. And Ricky Rubio would be a, a good guy to be able to teach him that. And yeah, Colin Sexton he 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 might have to go if they're going in this direction. I, I if would, they are. I would think so. They could keep him though. You know who Evan Mobley reminds me of? Who? Ralph Sampson. I mean, I. And the, guess. what do you you mean? Looks or like plays? Somebody's style? not both. Plays yeah. well, not looks. <laughs> looks I was no. about to say no, unless he grew out a sash. Maybe he's also but. not seven foot four. Yeah, Ralph Sampson but was he's, a giant. He's like seven. He's foot. long. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's long, but he he can, but he can handle. He can do more. He can do more on a. It's it's the evolution of the game, but I can see what you Ralph, mean by Ralph Ralph, Sampson, back then. Though, Ralph Sampson yeah, was could do guy. more than what a regular center oh, could yeah, do. He was that guy. Yeah, but yeah, no, like Evan Mobley, he's. Obviously, he's a little more skilled. Evan Mobley could. Game. Evan Mobley could be one of the best players in the league because he can pretty much do everything. He's a high level passer. He can score. He can shoot. He's good in the pick and roll. He can. He can do it all. Cle- Cleveland needs guys like him. He's a monster. Now, the Cleveland. What are the chances Cleveland messes this up? <laughs> Under or over fifty percent? What do you uh, think? Like eight, like ninety five. <laughs> what do you think, Shelly? Yeah, I. It's hard to say. Isaac Okoro. I, I, I actually want them had, to get it together. Isaac Okoro actually had a decent rookie season yeah. for the Cavs. So he did. Th- there's some hope there. Like I said, I think maybe this Ricky Rubio trade um, will solve maybe some of their chemistry issues, um, get the ball moving a little bit more, and then they can also just play more half court with you, Evan Mobley and stuff. They need to move Kevin Love too. We for, we haven't even brought that up. Yeah, I mean that's been expected for a long time. Yeah. And now it's just even more put into fruition, I guess. So official, and poor official Montrez deal. Harrell. Yeah, Kuzma, Harrell, and KCP to the Wizards. What uh, draft picks? Wizards get the first round pick, and yeah, they get the twenty second pick. Lakers get Russell Westbrook in a 24, 20, 24 and twenty twenty eight picks. Wow. Yeah, we are at twenty twenty eight draft picks, people <laughs> yeah. being dealt. By the time LeBron is gone, they'll need picks. So that's crazy to think yeah. about. Um. The pick is in for Toronto. They haven't picked yet, but the camera's on Jalen Suggs. <laughs> okay, it's I it's probably going to be what we expect. But for the yeah. Wizards, Montrose does that trail does that tra- trade do them do them any good? No, the Wizards. Okay, they they got Kyle Kuzma, which I think being in LA was one of the biggest problems for Kyle Kuzma. I think that, that LA is, lifestyle really. I he think he gets more his hate. Hair blonde, changed his whole persona. I think he gets more hate than he deserves. I think he's still got I a mean, chance. I've heard people say that in the past few days. He really like his. It's like the monster stole his talent that on the offensive end. He couldn't make too. a jumper. He couldn't. He went from being like 
a, a score like his rookie year to not being able to score at all this year. Mm-hmm. And part of it is LeBron coming in and them changing everything, but he does need to change the scenery. Yeah. And Trez, I think Trez will help in Washington because he's gritty. And that's that fits that culture wow. in Washington. Yeah, but I don't know about oh my. Is and, it crazy? Is it that crazy? Yeah, I can't I mean, wait I think it's crazy. It's a riser. Okay. It's a riser. And KCP, he'll help, but now Classic. Washington Washington oh, needs to get a point guard. You're gonna you're gonna like this one. With the fourth pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Toronto Raptors select Scotty Barnes. Hey, yeah. I just won 40 bucks, people. Hey. Nice. That was my bet for wow. top four. So I made a <laughs> I made a, a little more on there. Well, it was a free bet. It oh, was a ten dollar okay. free bet for it to go Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Evan Mobley, and then Scotty Barnes. So a Scotty Barnes and Pascal Siakam from You know what court. that also means? What? Chris just lost a lot of money. <laughs> what did he put money on? He put the money on J- those four, but it being Jalen Suggs in- uh, instead of Scotty I Barnes. Forgot. Chris I forgot about that. Chris, I'm sorry yeah. for your yeah. big money Chris. loss. Listen, man, Chris, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. You're but not, I'll take the free bet. You're not win. very good at this game, this betting game. Yo, you know who Scotty Barnes, this is this is his ceiling. This is the player I compare him to. His ceiling is Kevin Garnett. That's that's a bit much for me. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's his, so that's his max. You know what's crazy, though, now? He plays very similar. It, what's crazy, though, He's, is... His intensity and the way he plays is... I love how, the, yeah, I love how he approaches the but game. What I'm thinking is, how far can Jalen Suggs fall? Orlando doesn't need a point guard. They don't. They won't draft. Orlando him. doesn't. Need OKC a point guard. doesn't really need a point guard. He could fall. To, Golden State could take him. Golden he State getting there. Jalen Suggs, I think, would be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they need that. We, we were we were talking about it. They were looking at uh, Book Night. If they get a Jalen Suggs can, as like a backup take, guard, yeah. and it. Steph's so good off the ball too. Like if you wanted to, yeah, run you can run. System, they run small ball matter. stuff all the yeah. time. I think this is a great pick, honestly, for the Raptors. I mean, you you get a point guard and a power forward in one. Yeah, I he can I'd play like multiple a, positions. Yeah. He's a really good defender, and I mean, See, Fred Van Vliet I, is here. I think his offensive game is miles it's better, above. Draymond it's better. Green's. That's why I said he's he's a he's a much better. He should be a much better version. That's why I'm saying more Kevin Garnett. I don't know if his IQ will be as high as Draymond's because that's the biggest reason why he's been in the league for so long because he's so smart. Of course. But, yeah, he has has the intensity. He has the the length. He's almost almost 6'11". They're 100%. He just needs a jumper. And he's another one of those guys, too, that they said he – there's a chance he could grow. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like, some of these guys are hitting growth spurts now, which is – Nuts. Speaking of growing, this is a weird like thing, but I heard this earlier today. I was listening to a podcast. Okay. A trusted basketball podcast. I heard Franz Wagner has grown to almost six eleven. He's that'd be insane. He was six nine. I heard he grew to almost six. That might be a big reason why he's so I highly did, touted. Now. I'm I'm just very confused. I I still thought his brother was better. Mo? Yeah. I think he, he showed he was more. a better scorer. I think I just I, I think I'm Franz is a better like, overall player. He's a he's a better uh, defender. I, maybe I'm just biased. I don't. I'm not. I really. love Mo. Yeah, I I love Mo. But Franz is a better defender. He's he's more a better athletic. Defender. He's more well rounded. E- yeah, exactly. He's got a yeah. handle. He's a better yeah. He's a better passer defender. And I yeah, Mo, Mo can I just, score. I don't I don't think Franz will be that level of a scorer. But yeah, he's he's just a better all around prospect. He can he can play basically one through four, and that's a exactly. big deal for a lot of teams. Yeah, I guess that's all NBA wants nowadays. So the dudes that can do everything. Yeah, every single thing. Exactly. Yeah, this which is it's it's weird that there are more and more guys that can do everything. This oh, is going to yeah, make things the level of talent is, today is yeah crazy. This is going to make things really interesting because, like, I'm still seeing on Twitter that people are saying that Jalen Suggs is going to go to Orlando or that he's at the top of their board. So, the, what does do, Orlando? Do not, you do not take Jalen. What does Orlando do now if they do go Jalen Suggs? Let's just start thinking hypothetically since we got a couple minutes. They'd have to trade somebody if they took Jalen Suggs. They have. They had a good season out of Cole Anthony. They got RJ Hampton late in the, the season. Who before Mark before Markel Fultz got hurt, he was having his best season. Yeah, and both if of he those, gets healthy again, Cole Anthony and Markel Fultz are your guys. Yeah, I think Cole Anthony proved that. He's and the I, guy you honestly, want to keep RJ on. Hampton had some good games in there off the bench. Yeah. I think he's solid. So it's like Kuminga might be the most yeah. logical thing at this point, right? Unless they, 
I, I don't know. Yeah, this this is a weird spot. Mo Bamba still in the like like we, like I said. Unfortunately, <laughs> me and he's my guy. Me and Malik talk about it all the time. He kind of needs to get out of Orlando. I yeah. w- they should have traded up for Evan Mobley. It could have rocked Evan Mobley and Mo Bamba <laughs> and wasted both of them. <laughs> yeah, just, they, and wasted all of them. I've given up. Oh, yeah. Because at first Mo Bamba was stuck behind Vucevic, which makes sense. Yeah. But then they traded and they got Wendell Carter back in that trade. It, it's, and it's, it, it's even worse that Wendell Carter started playing great as soon as they traded. Yeah, for so him. it just doesn't seem like Mo, Mo Bamba has a place in this team. Yeah. I still think he has talent. Pistons. But the other thing, too, for the Magic nah. is like if Jonathan Isaac comes back healthy, stud. That's where you'd want to pair him. Stop with, it. You could pair him with like Jonathan Kuminga and stuff. You have a pretty big team. Um, Honestly, I, outside of Kuming, I don't see the other like clear option. Yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't go Kuminga with that. There. I mean, unless you like, because if you take Jalen Suggs, you start to run into what the Timberwolves did log way jam. back when, and you just have so many point guards. What do you do with them? And they've on, at this point, all their point guards have shown up a little bit at least. Yeah, yeah, you guys got to be close to the pick, right? Yeah. Show, no, they're showing Kate Cunningham's baby pictures right now. Oh, nice. Okay. Jaylen Are they Green. going to a commercial? Jalen Green's had in the, the same haircut Orlando? since he was. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is oh, going to yeah, be. Showing a... Traded no, traded Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, and Evan Fournier. Yeah. Evan Fournier is having a good Olympics the pick as is well. In. Who yeah. who does Orlando? They could Orlando could take James Book Knight, honestly. All right, just a no, guard. No They're spoilers. taking Josh yeah. Giddy. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> I will say Indiana. They uh, got the thirty first pick from Milwaukee. The Bucks got the fifty fourth. 60 and a future second round pick not a lot but you know yeah the, that's the second, Bucks don't eat that second round though you can you can find somebody yeah. so i don't know i'm surprised that indiana actually moved tried to move up because there'd been talks that they wanted to move back from their 13th pick so we'll have to see there but um i hear the pick is going on on the phone so i'm gonna talk yeah. over it yeah, so just, that just i can talk over it, yeah, yeah. But, yeah I, at the last minute i thought book night and wow wow okay so, so it's still crazy yeah, uh, I mean, well, yeah, it's just what weird. Are the, what are, it's just weird. Okay. Yeah, this is this is uh. Okay, so we got Adam Silver here. They pulled the. They pulled. The, uh... With the fifth pick, in the 2021 <laughs> NBA Draft, the Orlando Magic select Jalen Suggs what? from Gonzaga <laughs> was... University. I guess just draft for the best player make some trades. Is all well, their thought process? Maybe. Yeah, I. I'm Bro. with you. I think or two guard Cole Anthony. It's kind of they, they got to be giving up somebody. Yeah, they, they have to. There's got to be some sort of pick. You got to remember too. They also have what is it? The eighth pick. So they could. They have the. Oh my god, they have the eighth. Yeah. Pick too. So mm-hmm. like there could be that. some package that they're trying to work on. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Where he, they he could be traded. Either he could be traded before the end of the night. Yeah. We'll either see. he gets traded or their eighth pick gets traded. There's a lot of things on the table or. The eighth pick and Cole Anthony get traded for something. I don't know. There's a lot of different things. I'm a fan of the sparkly suits this year. <laughs> I don't mind them. I don't know. It's a, a little, little extra bit flair. Odd. I always feel yeah, like it's a little bit odd at matching. A bit much else. for me, but yeah, I don't know yeah. about matching my my you know, your, my co coworkers. Listen, when when you have that much money and this it's draft night, you got to do a little bit of something. Yeah, I'm all about doing something flashy. Yeah. I, I would have kept it simple like Cade with the all black, but hey, that was actually yeah. pretty slick though for first yeah. pick. <laughs> Pretty smart move. So now that moves on, we're gonna move on to OKC. Jalen sucks five. But Jalen sucks to the Magic. Hey, question: Is Drew Timmy in the? Did he? No, enter, he went he back. Staying? He went back to Gonzaga. So yeah, they're, him, they're I'm surprised. Again, why didn't you know. Corey Kispert stay? Well, uh, well, why, why stay another year? Honestly, this his, might, his, his his his. I don't think he could have gone I, I, any I mean, higher. I guess I'm surprised. I didn't think he would be this high of a touted prospect to be honest to me he if, doesn't scream if, NBA. if you're that good of a shooter on a championship team true like and he improved he improved in other areas too so i this is he's, the, big, this he's the big body exactly he's he's like six 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 seven and not skinny yeah gonzaga's gonna be good though next year too because uh they chet. had that chet holgram yeah mm-hmm. him yeah. and drew timmy are gonna be locking down the paint yeah, that's gonna be scary actually mm-hmm. but uh even the the french the frenchman is leaving gonzaga too i saw uh, Ayayi. Yeah. 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 Which he's, I like I like his game. I think he's a he's also a first round projection. Late first that round, or, I yeah, believe. That are yeah, beginning a second, something they like that. They have to be packaging him later on or soon. No, I mean it to. doesn't have to be him though. They could be trading RJ Hampton in their eighth pick or Cole Anthony in their eighth pick. You can't 
there's a lot of different options that they you have. You could trade Cole Anthony. I do but like after Jaylen what he so. showed this year. I do too. But yeah, yeah I, I mean, don't think you can get rid of Cole Anthony. Yeah, I think it's a hard. It's in a yeah. weird spot. It's definitely like a take the best available um, at this point. And you could run, like, like we said, they they traded Evan Fournier, so they they could do a one two Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, R J Hampton off the bench. It could work. It just Marco Fultz. Yeah, I mean. The, the, you, but you scared you, you, for Marco you might somebody. just get booted out of the right. NBA. Well, that be, that's I don't I don't want that to happen because he was he was playing so well. But and then with he his got hurt. now with his injury history, it's like that's what that that might be. It's it, hard to of say the injury history that could be. It. You know, people are are nervous. But, man, so yeah, this that's this, that, that sucks <laughs> for 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 Markel for for Jalen. Great if it ends up being Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony in the in the backcourt for Orlando, that is Solid. that looks really good. Yeah, so this yeah this draft already getting it's kind of what we figured though the top three are pretty much for sure four seem to be more locked in this morning but I never say never and uh, yeah we've already had craziness yep my yeah, uh, it's all it's completely up in the air bet for MGM account we does have, have no more idea. money in it now forty two fifty richer yeah I almost uninstalled the app the other day but <laughs> I uh, if we're gonna go off on a tangent. I did a a twelve game baseball parlay yesterday. Oh, Jesus Christ! I had all of them right. I don't do any baseball. I haven't bet on anything since like the Western Conference. The ones finals. that I got wrong: the Rays lost to the Yankees in ten innings, walk off. Uh, the Royals beat the White Sox baseball in ten the innings. Hey, I said a that's, how, that's how I've won baseball. And the Orioles hit a walk off single in the ninth to beat the Marlins. Those are the three games I got wrong. So that's pretty rough. Anyway, back to the NBA. Okay, see. <laughs> what do you guys think? Oh, uh, they got Shea Gilgis. They got rid of. Uh, but they've been trying to trade Shea Gilgis and their I sixth pick. I don't understand that. I, don't I think either. he's I don't one either. of the best he's, young players. He's a he's a future All Star. I yeah. think they if were just trying to see list. if anybody would bite on it. Maybe see, yeah. because he is that good, but at the same time, he's not somebody that you risk giving up the number one pick necessarily for. At the same time, no, 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 no. You got so, Shea Gilgis. You got Lou Dort. Yeah, the torture chamber. So, do they now go? And Jonathan you got Kuminga. In my, in my mock, I have them taking Kaminga. Didn't they just get I'd rid of? Uh, who just who just got the Pelicans just traded Stephen Adams to who? To Memphis. To Memphis for uh, Jonas Valanciunas. Yeah, yeah. Technically, okay. Eric Blood. Sorry, and that's that's how Memphis got the Thunder. Got the the Thunder brought me up to Stephen Adams. Well, the the, <laughs> the Thunder traded away Moses Brown. Yeah. Um, and they got rid of Diallo too. They gave him to the Pistons, yeah. which was a great move for the Pistons. Yeah, that was a little some sort of move. Diallo was their two guard. He's gone. Lou Dort is a two guard, but he's not right. like a go to scorer. They have Poku. They could go Kumingo or Book Knight. They have Poku there. So I mean, yeah, I, I feel I like Kuminga is one of them too. I feel like Kuminga is kind of the best, the best available yeah. in this for for the the deep in, Inception level rebuild they've been doing. Because they have every pick for the next like twenty years. Yeah, they might go yeah. Kuminga just to keep the rebuild going and just keep everybody see. keep everybody on their toes. Yeah, because yeah, this rebuild goes way too deep. Almost. Also, side note, I know we were talking. This is a long time we were talking Gonzaga though, <laughs> but Central Michigan is playing Gonzaga this upcoming basketball season. You should go see it. Yeah, it could be a two hundred point blowout. No offense <laughs> to my Chippewas, but it won't be. They don't have Monte Morris it won't anymore. Be or nothing, so yeah. yeah, I could see that. It'll be pretty gross with the sixth pick. All right, see so okay, get. Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay, sixth pick is in, and I'm just waiting for the commissioner to. Whoa! Oh, oh, let's go. Things are getting. Oh boy, I really things are getting interesting. Now that I just thought of it, hectic. I oh hope that God. they. I hope that they took that Josh not, Kitty. That is not what I. Uh... So the. Wow! With the sixth pick. In the 2021 NBA Draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder select Josh Giddy. They did. Holy moly. You know, I'm going to be 100% honest. That is not what I thought Josh Giddy was going to look like. <laughs> no. I told you I didn't know anything about the Listen, foreign man. players. Australian so, Rookie of the Year. Hey. So, they, they, a Shea Gill just copy comes somewhat. But not as like 
Yeah. Those are pretty good stats. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have to... You yeah, could I got to think about this one for a minute. I got to think about this at one. At the same time... Talking it, it about it, it can all right, make sense. I'm gonna. I'm, sense. I got the comment of he's got no game in my head right now, and I'm watching <laughs> with, these highlights <laughs> with positionless basketball nowadays. Are they, yeah. There's a chance that Ooh. he could fit almost anywhere, and you could like he could play like a three and be like a a ball handling three or something like that. I don't. It's hard to picture at the moment, but I don't know. By, get, by game, I mean like high level, like scoring and like handle talent. Did he you guys have say uh, he's one of the youngest in the draft? Yeah, those numbers for the Australian league were pretty sweet. Then for well, he was the Australian league MVP. Yeah, those are pretty sweet numbers for that young of a kid. Yeah, he's, that's he's, not he's a clearly, bad league. He's clearly talented. I just didn't think he was as high. he shouldn't have been as highly rated. He's as just he was. raw, and that yeah. jump. He for has, OKC for where they for where they are, I just said their rebuild is very deep. Maybe they know they're getting rid of Shea Gilgis. You could play I, them together too. Yeah, you yeah. could play them together. I don't know how you can be a rebuilding they team could, and give up a guy like Shea. That's what I thought yeah. too. They could they could totally run positionless basketball and just yeah. I mean they're all long enough. Lou Dort is. I mean, he's a defender and he's he can score. He's your he's your LeBron stopper. <laughs> <laughs> James Harden stopper. Go back to those playoff clips. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and look, they're showing these notable Australian-born first-round picks. Luke Longley, decent. Andrew Bogut had some really good years. Ben Simmons, some ups and downs. Josh Green, meh. <laughs> Hasn't played yet. So there's some ups and downs in that. Hey, Luke Longley's a champion. Yeah. He, he, has, three, he has three rings, I believe. On, three of them. But so the, it looks like the Warriors, they're going to keep these picks. Well, for now, that's also yeah, for now. can always change. But who do you think they're going to pick? I think I feel like the Warriors can't pass up on a guy like Kaminga. Most most mocks have had them taking Book Knight, which makes more sense. Right, but they didn't. They didn't. Kaminga Kaminga is not a guy you want if you're trying to win right now. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. Book Knight Book Knight is a guy you're almost 100 percent sure is going to get you because buckets. you want. Uh, yeah, they want to be titled contenders. So you're you're right. I, I agree with that. And they yeah. guess yeah, they just got Wiseman last year. So. Yeah. That's weird. I wonder how James Wiseman feels getting put in every trade rumor so, <laughs> on earth. Probably not good. <laughs> so, well, okay, so now the crazy thing is the Magic could still get Jonathan Kaminga. So that's, they got the eighth pick, yeah. To get Jalen, oh if, if they, they get Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Kaminga, who that's a win, at, not a bad haul. at times both were top five projected, I'd say that's a pretty good draft. I mean, yeah, you don't know what you're going to do with those guards, but – you come out with Jalen Suggs and Jonathan Kaminga, those are yeah, Kaminga, quality Yeah, Kaminga's picks. like a four. So so you could, yeah. I think oh, the Magic, Magic yeah. would look good after that. For a first-year coach, that's a that's a pretty good start. Yeah, really yeah. Good plus start. they already have all those young guys already on the roster that are you know starting to look promising, at least a little bit. So yeah, I guess I guess Golden State Man, would this has been crazy. do seem like they would stick with Boog Knight. The only other one that I could think of is maybe a Davion Mitchell. Or Franz Wagner. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Franz it would be crazy Wagner if they took the Franz Warriors. right here. They're... It's, 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 as crazy as things have been, it's not out of the like, realm of possibility. Yo, what did Rip Hamilton tweet? And, uh, I didn't even see oh, it. I missed it. Rip Probably Hamilton something about tweeted Kane. something. Jordan Poole's been looking good in some of his offseason stuff. He, he played really well near the end of the season. Yeah, they they need to keep him. So, I mean, if they got... Uh, Golden State's trying to build up their bench to be you know championship mm. contenders. The pick is in. There's a chance. Well, how much time is left though? On your guys' clock, there should be like it's, it's a, uh, it, it just like says pick thirty is in. seconds. Pick is in. Yeah, I was gonna say because still gotta have like thirty seconds probably. So this will be interesting too. The Warriors have the seventh and the fourteenth. Yeah, man. that's, that's why I, I thought they were gonna package trade, them and trade, trade for yeah. a star. Yeah, well, that's why there was a lot of talk about Wiseman the seven and fourteen being yeah. traded for you know something something Kate pretty Cunningham. big. Um, <laughs> we were thinking. Brad Brad Beal was the thing we were thinking. And, that, 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 yeah, that, yeah, that, in, that would make the most In sense. our mock, I also think Damian Lillard would be really hype. But I was scared he was going to go to the Lakers. But so happy in our happen. mock, Me we too. had the Warriors taking Book Knight and Corey Kispert, I believe, because they're two kind of ready-to-go guys. One off the bench. Corey Kispert you could put in the starting lineup, just yeah. be a shooter um, for them. So 
We'll have to see on my clock. If they, got, if they get Kispert at 14, that would be a really good pickup. Yeah. He can come in and shoot immediately. Yep. I got 10 seconds on my uh, pick coming in. So I'm sure you guys got Adam Silver coming up to the screen. With the seventh pick. And I will relay the audio as soon as it gets to it. I like that you guys get a little bit of a head start. You guys can consume what happens. You get our reactions, and then you <laughs> set your, your reaction from our reaction. Yeah. Uh-oh. Let's just go straight face for this one. Don't give yeah, him don't anything. Don't give nothing. Don't, don't give, give me nothing. nothing. I'm all right with hold that. Hold it in. <laughs> Might be a common With the one, seventh though. pick. <laughs> the Warriors State take Warriors select. Kai Jones. <laughs> Who are they taking? Lord. Malik with the just head nod. He tried to stay straight face, and I'm pretty sure that just means that it's book night anyway. <laughs> Wiseman a year ago. Let's go to the podium. Adam Silver. With the seventh pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Jonathan Kuminga. Oh, we got you. You got me. <laughs> so <laughs> it just went with best available. Last year, you draft a guy you need to develop. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work for most of the season. You, he gets hurt. You don't have to develop him anymore. You win. Mm-hmm. This year, you draft a guy you need to develop. I don't know. He had a really good genius. Yeah, I was gonna say though, he, looks solid. He does. He's a monster athlete. He has he, experience. He, still, he has some experience, but I still think he needs time. I don't. It's possible he could got he could be a guy that comes in and contributes right away, but I don't see it happening just like that. Yeah, I I, I can see that. But I mean, he could come off the bench if they keep energy. Andrew Wiggins. If they keep Andrew Wiggins, he could come off the bench. Right. Well, there's a chance yeah. they might not retain Kelly Oubre as well. Um, so he could be a replacement for Kelly Oubre um, as well. Them so then not you have, taking Book Knight is so So then you have two strange. some two high-energy guys um, in their front court. They, they, must, they must really like trust in the fact that Jordan Poole is going to be like their trusted shooter off the bench. Yeah. Not, not going for Book Knight. Yeah. So, do you guys think if uh, Kaminga and uh, Jalen Green play really well, the G League route might be a bigger thing for guys coming up? Well, I, I already think it's going to be a bigger thing, just because a lot of these dudes don't want to go to college. <laughs> I wouldn't. Just, so you're yeah. not going to well, pay them. at some of the money that they're making now. Exactly. They might not? be fine. Then, then there's there's that uh, that, I forgot the name of the league. Overtime is doing. I think it's so stupid. Oh but yeah, but it's a it's a league for high school dudes that don't want to go to college. They can just go there and like play a year or two and then go to the league. Right. Uh, but with name and likeness now, like you know, yeah, you never know. YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Jonathan Kuminga. And now, like, now this makes it hard for Orlando. Now, I was I was I was completely right after four. <laughs> because now this, Orlando, yeah. you think they draft the Turkish guy? If Orlando would have, they went, took Shingun. <laughs> I would be happy and extremely surprised. Yeah. But now with Kaminga off the board, he was kind of like the last like pretty easy pick, I feel like. They can't really go with Book Knight now. <laughs> they took Suggs. I wouldn't. They could take Franz Wagner. You could take Franz Wagner. Yeah. They could. You know what? I'm going to go with they take Book Knight. Maybe just they, could, they just, could also just, do that. Just because. Maybe they make some crazy splash and they, they go with Jalen Johnson. That That would be a lot. <laughs> Taking him at eight, because a lot of the other guys right. that are up there are guards. So like yeah. the big guys are Franz Wagner, Jalen Johnson, Alperin Sengun. Moses, Moses Moody is there. I don't think Keon but, Johnson is going to go top ten, but who? But knows I'm just saying Moses Moody is another one of those guards. Yeah. So yeah. Like, <laughs> there's no like they should not go with a guard. Honestly, they might as well go Franz Wagner because they have so many guards. And, right. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. The only they might as well. non-guard that they could go is Jalen Johnson, Franz Wagner, basically. And if they if they Jalen draft Johnson a, has more of an athletic ceiling. If they draft a guard, they got problems. In my eyes, they're on ESPN. Pick is, pick is in. Oh. They've already made their decision. I yeah. guess it wasn't that hard. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. Give me the straight face, boys. The Orlando Magic select. They were showing first. Uh, First season head coaches this offseason, or did you see Willie Green on the day he got hired? Jackson Hayes got arrested. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Jackson Hayes has the very, been, has very, been, very first yeah, day. He's been all over the place ever since he got drafted. Yeah, I remember they, did, they didn't put him on the the all rookie team, and he 
like cussed out the NBA and said like <laughs> f them. Like he he has some things he needs to work on. <laughs> he cannon. might need a sports psychologist. <laughs> yeah, he he's he's a hothead. Yeah. Who was Orlando? Okay, we got to see what this Ooh. is gonna do. I mean, they say the pick is in, so that's usually about here comes Adam a Silver. minute off of when they're gonna do it. Okay, so I'm a minute off. So in 20 seconds, I'll have Adam Silver coming up to the screen. Um, wow. But the Magic can they got some options. Hmm. Yeah. They do <laughs> have some options. <laughs> that is interesting. That is very. With the eighth pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Franz Wagner from Berlin, They got two winning players. And the University of Michigan. They got two winning players. That's not bad. I mean. That's not bad. Like we said, I don't know who else you really take there. Um, it, it was kind of a tough spot for them, to be honest. So Franz just kind of makes sense. Uh, he fits in. He can kind of, kind of go for wherever. You don't look no six ten. I also Adam, didn't, unless Adam Silver's six eight. <laughs> also didn't realize that uh, Mo He's is on nine, the Magic so Adam now. Silver just might be tall. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I wasn't thinking that Mo is on the Magic right now. Is. He's moved all over the place. So is I didn't he on even... the Magic? Yeah. He finished they're the season interview. on the Magic. He's on they're... the Magic? Yeah. They're That's where he finished the season. I don't know if he's like still Uh-oh. signed to him. Because he, he got traded, so I don't know what his contract looked like. Yeah, I don't either. Cool. I yeah. just... He's a, he's a high IQ dude that can help. To me, I right just now. feel like there's a lot better players. Yeah, but in There's there, more talented guys. In that spot, though, there like the, most of them are guards. But honestly, if I'm Orlando, how many chances over the past 10 years have you taken on guys that are all raw talent? And don't work out. So many. Yeah. So it doesn't. They've, they've failed on so many guys. You know what? They just have raw talent and don't work out. Yep. Jonathan Isaac has been hurt, but it, he, it doesn't look like he's going to turn into a no. real superstar. No. They, they just, they need winning players that can just play well for them. Like nothing crazy. Here's the big question, Mark. What does Sacramento do now? Listen. Let, let, can we all agree that we feel sorry for whoever Sacramento was about to take? Yeah. I, it, whoever they take, I mean. You know, I really liked Sacramento's team coming into this season, too. And they just did not achieve. Listen, the, they were there know, for a little bit. You know something funny? There was a year, I think it was the last time we did uh, the podcast with Chris. Not the, like the last show, but the last NBA season we did. Our like preseason NBA predictions, it was two years ago. I had the Kings improving the most, and they said they would do the worst. The Kings went 42-40 and 40 that season. Yeah. And then they fired Dave Yeager and <laughs> hired Luke Walton. <laughs> yeah, I, that was dumb. <laughs> it all fell apart. That was dumb. <laughs> they they had one good season, and they were like, let's change things. Marvin Bagley has definitely underachieved. He's he, he's barely – he's played like 40% of games. Yeah. Like, he he hasn't played enough to, like, get adjusted to yep. the game, really. Darren Fox is great. Yeah, what having De'Aaron Fox. It's, it's and sad. He's, I feel, he's, yeah. he's becoming a superstar. And but he's, having you know. De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton, it's a good start. It's a it's a great like yeah. yeah one, it's a good one punch. too. Yeah. But so they yeah. basically have to go big, and like we said before, like there's not a ton of bigs, honestly, in this draft. They could reach for Kai Jones because he has so much the potential. Tur- but the Turkish guy. Kings fans would be mad if they. Yeah, did that. I don't know if he's because last time they did George's Papayanis when they had Demarcus Cousins. <laughs> they need. They would. Need they a, didn't work out very well. They would need a guy more like Jalen Johnson. I think they would go like Jalen Johnson, Kai Jones, more of those. Well, they, they athletic. Center, they could go somebody that can man. score. Like I, I go Moses Moody. Honestly, like a guy that you know. I if I'm Sacramento, I'm not taking a crazy risk right here, because you you are in such a rough spot. I take they, the Turkish guy. <laughs> But then they start to get guard heavy too, though. Why? Why? Just because. But doesn't that? Yeah, you don't want to log jam up with the guards. So take it. Take the chance. Moses Moody. What do you got to lose? Another bad losing season. I don't think they have enough guys that like are good scorers. Outside of De'Aaron Fox, you you can't really buddy heal. But he's angry with the organization and like halfway tries. Like Moses Moody is six seven. He's gonna score, and he has a lot of defensive potential. There's like Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese Halliburton is a like point guard. He is a point, he's a floor general. Yeah, but you can't play him. They're not the same types of players. Yeah, but you like are you gonna you're gonna just bring Moses Moody off the bench then? 
I mean, you could. Because where start. is it? I'm yeah, just thinking you like start. the fit. Like, where yeah. is that going to work? He could come off the bench. They don't have any scores off the bench. So, <laughs> you got to get somebody off the bench that can get you some buckets. Right. Somebody. If they took Shingun, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be upset because I like him. I'm... But I don't want him in Sacramento. <laughs> That's the thing. True. I, I think if he when, goes to Sacramento, when, it's going to fail. When are they moving the Kings up to Seattle? <laughs> That's now, the real Now question. you're at, listen. Let, let me shake your yeah, hand. No, right. You're no, asking the serious questions no, tonight, no, Jordan. We don't need. You're, you're asking the real questions. Forget this pick. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody, <laughs> stop Adam Silver on For, his way out. Forget there. this pick. Let's talk about the real stuff. They when, got, they when got, are they moving Sacramento? To they Seattle? got three solid teams in California. One bad one, they can move away. Yeah, they don't need one. They don't need yeah. that team. Honestly, the Clippers need to like move back to San Diego because being in LA with the Lakers still isn't a That'd great look. Cool. But like. You are asking the the serious burning take, questions tonight, and I respect it. Take sir. them to Vegas. Take the Clippers to Vegas. Why not? Also, why not? Yeah, I think that's a good. <laughs> Malik and I talked about that last week about yeah, we, we think teams. the next teams. The NBA is gonna add a, like a few more teams soon. Seattle and Vegas. And Seattle and Vegas. All of, they'd have to like change stuff with the East. I think moving Minnesota to the east makes the most sense because they need to stop suffering over. Yeah, there. I think so as well. Like, I feel bad yeah. for Minnesota fans having to stay up late at night, yeah. but. Yeah. yeah, those those fans don't deserve what they get, and making Alex Rodriguez a new owner isn't going to do much. <laughs> He's you, not bringing that Yankee magic you, to Minnesota. <laughs> did you see um, uh, what's his name? Anthony Edwards say he didn't know who uh, <laughs> yes. A Rod was, but, but he yeah. also said he could have been a professional <laughs> baseball player. Yeah, that guy's funny. You know, he, that guy's I don't know who that is. Man. I mean, he also said he doesn't like basketball. So, uh, he's oh a yeah, fun, he's, he's a character. The Sacramento Kings need to move to Seattle. Now. Okay. Good. <laughs> this was Let's a choice. This. I like this dude. With the ninth pick but. in the 2021 NBA draft, the Sacramento Kings select Davion Mitchell from Baylor University. <laughs> Let's just jam it up with fast guards. <laughs> Listen, man. If I'm De'Aaron Fox, I'm demanding a trade <laughs> right I'm now. out. I'm out. This is crazy. Huh. <sighs> I'm go- I'm gonna go to texting people. Well, he's a a, this is insane. <laughs> what does he do for them? I mean, he became a really good shooter this past good season. Defender too. This is like the worst landing spot for Davion Mitchell. Horrible. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it you is know, like terrible. You know, pre-draft oh there was like Davion Mitchell could go to like the Warriors or like as so many other teams that are up in that top echelon. Yeah, I'm confused. They're all they have just very good defensive guards. That doesn't Yeah, I don't know where he's going to line up. Like, I mean, obviously again, it's it's a a guard off the bench for them, but they didn't address any of the needs that they have. Harrison Barnes is getting older and older every year. Marvin Bagley wants out. Rashawn Holmes is all right. He did solid, solid. but he's <laughs> It's nothing special. Like, Davion Mitchell is a really, really good player. It's not against him. It's against the It has the nothing Kings. to do with him, yeah. Because he's going to give you 100%, 100% of the time. Yeah. But the fit for him just feels off. And again, it, he can be a defender, too. Like, he can be one of the best defenders in the NBA almost immediately. But is that going to be shown on the Sacramento team? I don't think so. Very confusing. That's crazy. Sell the team. Sell, sell <laughs> hashtag sell the franchise. <laughs> this is, I, listen, if I was a Sacramento fan, I don't, the Sacramento fans that are still holding on, first of all. There's like, no more Sacramento fans. I think they're all <laughs> Lakers fans they're, now. <laughs> they're still Sacramento fans. They still have people showing up to those games. It was, <laughs> hey, man. Do they still the people have that, that are still left, I'm, I'm, I apologize. What? They still have the same arena as they did back in like the nineties. I actually done? don't know. They used to have like one of the oldest stadiums. I don't know if it's still back check somewhere. I think so, <laughs> but I don't re- necessarily remember. Um. So now we got the Pelicans coming up. How long? How long did you guys want to do this? Because originally I said till nine. It's nine o'clock now. We can either keep going to like we could go to ten maybe, nine thirty maybe. We get through the lottery. Yeah, it don't matter to me. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just trying to feel it out. Gotta we'll see how there. these next few.
few picks go, and then we'll we'll go from there. So New Orleans next on the clock. New Orleans also a lot of question marks going on. Supposedly they're in the running for Kyle Lowry. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't. I like I the wouldn't. Valanchunas pickup actually. I was disappointed the Stephen Adams one didn't work out, but I feel like Valanchunas offers more to the team than Stephen Adams. I thought Stephen Adams was a good like defensive guy to add, but Valanchunas can add some offense to it and a little more versatility. Um, but this team has a lot of question marks still. Zion is there, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, but there's just something's not working for the Pelicans, and I felt like like this year they should have made it. Well, hiring Stan Van was there, didn't make sense yeah. from no. the jump. No, and I thought he, yeah. like I said before, I thought he was an okay pickup. I didn't like it, obviously, but I thought he would be, he'd be okay. No. And it just, it didn't yeah. work out at all. He, he, he can't coach these young guys. Mm-hmm. They just, they don't respond to him. When, uh, I don't under, I've never understood how that guy keeps getting, getting jobs in the NBA. Well, yeah. he was a good coach in Detroit. Then they made him the GM and it all yeah, apart. they always give. He, was, he, he always coach. wants full control of the team, that's, and he makes terrible. He makes terrible decisions. Awful, awful. So yeah, I'm not sure. But um, oh, pick is in. Adam Silver's up. Looking oh, at it, oh, I think oh, this is. <laughs> oh no! This is getting. This is getting weird. Yeah, this is, don't this, do this. This to is me. one of those drafts. <laughs> don't do this to me. The Pelicans Listen, have been so good in drafts. This kid recently. was a top ten recruit, and. Yep. He has a lot of With talent. The 10th pick but in the man. 2021 NBA draft, the New Orleans Pelicans select Zaire Williams from Stanford University. There are some droppers. There are some wow. dudes that are dropping. Zaire Williams, man. Good ball player, but he he had an underwhelming freshman season at Stanford. Exactly. But they're they're just taking a chance on the oh, talent, I guess. So he is going to the Grizzlies. Oh, he's going. Oh, yeah. I forgot. So this pick is going to the to the Grizzlies. I forgot. From that's that. the Grizzlies pick. Yeah. Must be boys with Josh. Still, it's still, they moved up to ten for Zaire Woods. They, that can't be. <laughs> they didn't move up to ten just to get Zaire Woods. Did they just move up they to ten did. just to get Zaire Woods? Dude, they're they're a very uh, long lanky team now, and with Stephen Adams anchor in the defense. They're kind of. They might be pesky. Yeah, like this. This kid has a lot of talent. He's really long. He can shoot, but yeah, he he doesn't have it all figured out yet. Which is it's odd that they took him because they need dudes to like help them improve more right now. These teams are making decisions. Yeah, there's. I'm not calling them good or bad. They're we, just making decisions. We figured this draft would be a little bit weird, but not this weird this fast. Yeah, this is. I kind of yeah. like that pick for the Grizzlies if he's going to the Grizzlies. He okay, so on ESPN's big board. Where is Zaire Williams? Probably, probably <laughs> where is Zaire Williams? He's on the board, but probably way down. He's a right? shoot, small forward, right? Yeah, I think that's where he's listed. Zaire Williams, top ten. Yeah, team teams are really just taking. It's just because he played with time. Bronny. Is he a shooting guard? <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. I literally I can't find him. Oh, this I guess because it's it. Oh, because because he got drafted. Because he got drafted. <laughs> I forgot I'm on the live. Oh, okay. It's because like, it's because LeBron tweeted. I'm gonna about him. I'm gonna go click on it. This is getting to a point his, where okay, I so his, don't know what to his do. overall rank was 28th. So he was projected end of the first round. Yeah, he he wasn't projected to go this high. Which means Memphis just Memphis got some word on them, yeah, or they you, saw a workout that just hypnotized them or something. Yeah. So now we got the Hornets up. How, would it, how is how are James Book Knight and Moses Moody dropping like this? Well, Moses Moody. I saw Moses, this was yeah, James, Moses Moody. James, got, James Book Knight especially. Yeah, Book Knight because Book Knight had jumped up a lot like, going into this. A team is just about to luck into him. Book Knight had been he was projected as high seven. rising. Yeah. Um, there was a point where if the Pistons get, didn't get the number one pick, they would consider him at three, uh, they were talking about. That would be just like the Pistons to do. Well, like we said, we can't deny Troy Weaver yet, though. True. Last pick of the lottery is 13, right? 14, technically. Okay. Do you want to stop it there? We can do that, okay. like 14, 15. 
Um, we can stop at the end of the lottery. Yeah, we'll see. We can go like right up. It'll probably be right up to nine thirty or so. We can see where we go. Um, Charlotte though is one of those big guys, uh, but they've been saying that they're going to go with Alperin, Sengun. Sengun to Sh- I actually like that. I like that a lot. It's kind of a position of need for them. A big man. Uh, yeah. They can put him alongside PJ Washington. So that would put you I with like Sengun, Sengun, PJ Washington, Miles Bridges, Terry Rozier, and Lamelo. Well, you have Gordon Hayward yeah. too, maybe. Yeah. You know, I would like them to see them trade for Lonzo Ball. As, <laughs> Lonzo and Lamelo were the same player. I know. <laughs> I'd like to see them play wanna, together. I don't want to. I don't want to see them cancel each other out on the. Ball. I think I Lamelo would. Lamelo's more of a. <laughs> yeah, Lonzo would. On, Lonzo would go off ball. I don't I want think, to see Lonzo go off ball. I think Lonzo should play. I off feel ball. like Lamelo would be that, the better off not, ball come, player. No, Lonzo. Should Lamelo's play the ball. better off ball. You think? I think. In Lamelo school, has they more, used to run. Lamelo though. has more offensive talent. Lonzo has always been like the leader of teams. It, Lonzo's a better passer, I think, in general. But I think Lamelo gets the offense started better. Lonzo's pretty stagnant. That's what they—they they don't need to play together. They, they don't. And they need no. to get Jello. See, stop it. You, <laughs> See, we, uh, we we made good progress I, I, with the Sacramento honestly, and Seattle stuff. I honestly think, seriously, though, if they traded Terry Rozier for Lonzo Ball, what that's good on both sides. Mm, maybe I'm gonna have to say I completely disagree. I, on I that. love Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is, is a, a better sp- player. I, I hate think. Terry Rozier, and he proved me wrong this year. Yeah, so. Scary Terry, he's great. But I'm just saying, I think. Why would Lamello and Lonzo are two brothers, point guards that do the same thing. But why wouldn't you want two brothers to play together? They're obviously see, they, got a connection. <laughs> like, come I just, on, man. I don't know how you don't see it. They, <laughs> they played high school. It together. sells tickets. Well. That, exactly. Isn't that the name of the game? Isn't that why you drafted Lamelo in the first place? I don't think you're. I don't think you're getting far as a team if Lamelo and Lonzo are your backcourt of the like the forecoming future. I don't know. They're both both big, lengthy guards. Joey, can you please interrupt here? <laughs> um, please. Well, Chris actually told me. Hornets are letting this go down to the deadline. I know. That was a long pick. Chris said that he bet $30 on Zaire to be t- drafted top 10, and he won 153 I wonder who he got that Is information he lying to from? us? I, that's what I was, oh, who, who did, where did he get that information so from? In, in, within his draft bets, though, he's about net neutral now. Okay. No, not really. He well, puts a lot of money on those No, bets. he's he's up a little bit. He's he's up a little bit. Chris, let me know how much you're up on money for this draft, but it's not as much as that pick cuz I know he spent some money on the top 4. Um I don't know. The Charlotte Hornets select Luka Garza with the 11th pick. I'd leave. I'd put that <laughs> I'd leave. start my car. I'd be out of here. <laughs> Show ends right there. Show's no, that over. just means you're going to be the biggest Hornets fan. I'd buy a jersey. Luca Garza jersey. I'd buy a jersey. <laughs> Outside of his family and people I that did, live in Iowa. I do. I am a big. I am a big fan of the Terry Rozier Hornets jersey, though. The yeah, dark so here's purple. the best available: James Buchnight, Keon Johnson, Sangoon, Corey Kispert, Moses. Come on, Sangoon. And they I, draft I want to see that Corey one. Kispert. I mean, it's Gordon funny. Hayward's getting over the. Getting over the hump. Me and me and Malik are big Gordon Hayward guys, but his injuries. Yeah. Or it's, it's just Sad. his injuries. Yeah, it's, he like, was having a really good year. Even he too. was. He so, was playing like an all star before he got hurt again. Now I'm curious though too, if like you're saying, some of these guys that are dropping is going to be really weird at where they're going to go. As the Spurs could get Book Knight, basically replacing Patty Mills. Uh, for the future. But, man, I don't know. There's it's, there's no way we can predict any of this. I just, I still find it weird. Like, I would rather have Cam Thomas than Corey Kispert. Or Zaire Williams. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> like, like yeah, don't just, you think? I don't know. Cameron Thomas could be just as good as Zaire Williams? He could be better. I, the Horn has got a lot of talent. So that's why I'm not. Yeah, the Hornets that's, have a lot yeah. of talent. And a big piece here, Adam Silver. Hornets are young. With the 11th pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Charlotte Hornets select James Booknight 
They can move off of Rosier or Graham now if they want to. I think yeah. Graham is more likely. Which he's a Graham is going to want too. some money. And I don't think they're going to want to pay him. No. From Yukon guard of Kemba Walker and getting rid of him to now getting a new Yukon guard. The Hornets have book night. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can't fault I I, I can't fault them for that pick. For him to fall that far to get him at eleven, I feel like is kind of a steal. Yeah, they they know they know Devontae Graham. They they might keep Terry Rosier for a while, but but Graham what? is not like a part of their future for a long term. Mm -hmm. And Terry Rozier will ask for more money once he wants another contract. And he already so, has a pretty big contract right now. Exactly. Yeah. So they're they they need a guy with this level of talent to keep in the fold once those guys are gone. And he he has that level of talent to back it up. Yeah. Yeah. You got some scoring. Right, because yeah, I mean their starting lineup, they don't have a lot of guys that they need to replace necessarily so they do have a they were in a position where they could take kind of the best available exactly so yeah it's, it's for the future honestly right that makes sense also i don't think the martin twins will be there forever no those are also two slash three guys that come in and shoot and score yeah they won't be there forever so right yeah. man they have an athletic team though, very too. yeah very athletic and now we get to move on now we get to move on to the spurs who have to be salivating at the fact that Alperin Sengun is right there for the <laughs> exactly. take. If they yeah. if they draft him though, you yeah. know he's going to be a Listen, great player. He's going to be solid. He's going to be a great player if the Spurs draft him. Well, the Spurs don't draft bad. Well, a that's few, a few years ago they took Lucas Amanich and I, I liked him a lot, but he hasn't played yet. Yeah, he hasn't honestly. done a whole lot. So yeah. there's, but yeah, he still has I mean, a chance. But right, yeah, the the, the Spurs, it's it's hard to. They, yeah. they deny <laughs> look at these, international prospects. Look at these like UConn that. guards. Ray Allen, Rip Hamilton, Ben Gordon, Kemba Walker, James Booknight. The only... You're leaving one first, out. What? You're leaving one out? Oh, the only, those are the only first night first round guys? Yeah, first oh. round guards. I was going to say my, my man Shabazz Napier, too. Yeah. Oh, boy. But like those guys Shabazz all have Napier. really notable NBA careers. Yeah, there's been a lot of good UConn basketball players. So it seems like when UConn has something... That uh, you know, it's a real, really good talent. Who do you guys think the Spurs are gonna take here? No. How do we predict? <laughs> I mean, Shingun is a good idea because they they have the track record of going international guys, but it's it's completely Cor unpredictable. Corey Kispert. <laughs> but they could go Corey Kispert. They're, Outside of Patty Mills, they don't have much shooting. They could go Keon Johnson. That doesn't seem too bad. It was the talks of DeRozan being gone. thrown around, being traded, gone. Yeah, so with Russell Westbrook going to the Lakers, do you think that negates any of the Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan going there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It pretty much shuts it down. Absolutely, yeah. You think the Lakers apparently are Russell done Westbrook making apparently, moves? No, they're not done. They, they still got – they need to fill out the roster still because I think having Andre Drummond and Russell Westbrook both, like, who who's sacrificing the rebounds? And as much as yeah, who's exactly. as much as Lakers <laughs> no fans, Russell, Russell Westbrook is not sacrificing rebounds. As much as Lakers fans hate Kyle Kuzma as well, it gets rid of a bench option too. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. their bench pretty much right now is Caruso, Taylor Horton, and Markeith Morris, which is not much. Is if you have a full bench, that's a good three people to have on your bench, but that's not a full bench. Who they start? They need the, like three more, three or four more dudes. They need they, they need some shooters too. Yeah, who they starting at the two now? Alex Caruso. That's, that's the <laughs> that's not. I'm I'm sorry, that's not no, gonna I happen. I mean, yeah, it's I, a high possibility. I agree though. Like, yeah, who are they're, they going to go? They're going to find a, a, a. I think they're going. Who are they going to find? They're going to find they're a gonna, shooter. They're going to bring <laughs> in Andre Roberson. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to find a shooter oh, to start at the two. Instead of Caruso isn't a good enough option to start at the two. Wesley them, Matthews honestly. coming back? I don't know if he is. I mean, they could. They, oh, Dennis they Schroeder. Probably, they probably Schroeder. would. They're not paying Schroeder. Schroeder. Yeah. Is it, they oh, they're him. dumping him? Yeah, he's gone. Schroeder wants 100-something million. That's true, too. He ain't worth that. <laughs> yeah, Schroeder wants gone. all the money in the world, and they're not giving him. I don't like, think Reggie Jackson might make more money than him because Reggie Jackson just had a great playoff. I can't stand Reggie. 
You know, you know who it seems like they would sign I, Dennis I, Schroeder, listen, the Kings. Before you say that, I love the fact that he just had such a great playoff run, and there are still people that hate him. Yeah, I can't stand listen, Reggie Jackson. He wasn't supposed to be a number one guy, and that's no. just it. Just happened. Yep, it just it's happened. Not on him. So, yeah. I, I can't hate him because that's what the Pistons made him. I can. <laughs> Why do you hate him because of what the Pistons? Because of his play style, I, I can't. But yeah, the before, hero but, ball, the hero ball. Before got he me. got hurt, he was all right. But after the injury, it was it, it went all. Down the only down. Piston player I allow to play hero ball is Will the Thrill Bynum. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he dunked on Tyson Chandler. Oh, he gets all the credit yeah. in the world. He's my guy. So I said, so. only guy that can play hero ball for the Pistons and Rodney Stuck. My boy. <laughs> okay, you got to stop now. You have to stop. My piston that I would allow to play hero ball is Bucks and Six, Brandon Jennings. <laughs> yeah, all right. All you right. said Bucks and Six for a reason. The, the Bucks, Brandon Jennings, can go hero ball, not the whoa, Pistons. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Brandon Pistons, Jennings. Brandon Jennings, before he got hurt, was leading us to a playoff. Or Charlie. That wasn't happening. Yeah, Josh was. Smith was still there. Brandon Jennings Josh was going Smith. off. <laughs> Josh Smith was still there. Yeah, we finally paid him off. <laughs> Yeah, finally he's off the books. That's why we finally have money. Money to spend. Man, Spurs okay. pick is so, in. They're giving DeMar DeRozan is a free agent. He's gone, most likely. You're yeah. building around Keldon Johnson. And DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray. They drafted Devin Vassell last year. Lonnie yeah. Walker. Lonnie, Lonnie Walker. Walker. Yeah. It's just a bunch of young guys. Yaka Pertles. And there. LaMarcus Aldridge. Yep. Yeah, they got Yaka. Well, I forgot LaMarcus. I, I said in LaMarcus Aldridge. He's, <laughs> he's, not, he's Yeah. He's retired. Unfortunate. Yeah. He's out. Yeah, like Jakob Pertl. Uh, right now they're still talking about Russell Westbrook. Didn't Draft Shen Goon. Cool. Russell put Pertl Westbrook on the bench. And is a Laker. He's going to be bad. That's what you hope. They're yeah. still probably going to make the finals. All right. I heard the pick on your guys' end. Oh, well, I didn't hear it. I heard the ding, 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 ding. Is it a Spurs pick, though? That means that's a Spurs <laughs> he pick. He doesn't know how to react right now. That means that's a Spurs pick. This kid Yo, has a ton that, of talent. Yeah. But Jesus. Christ. I just feel like you could have waited. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NBA draft. The Spurs, though, always the know San something. The San Antonio Spurs select Joshua Primo from Toronto <laughs> and the University Primo. of Alabama. That's what I'm saying. You could have waited, but. He was 17 his whole freshman season, and he was really good for Alabama. Josh so his Primo. Ta- his talent is that he's like 6'6. He has, all, like, Tons of offensive talent, but yeah. Hey, he's left-handed, but learned to play basketball right-handed. It's That's me. Skill. Started playing hoops at age two. That's about me. Yeah, I I have no idea yeah, what's coming for the rest of this draft. <laughs> that is really uh, crazy, though. Josh Primo at twelve. Josh Primo at twelve. All right, folks at home, don't listen to the ESPN board of the next <laughs> greatest player on available. They will not be taken. <laughs> Yeah, what? Wow. Pacers, just take Corey Kispert. Well, I mean, they just, could, don't waste time. Just take Corey Kispert. Are they trying to compare they this They could draft take Moses Moody, one? though, because there's, there's not a chance. There's a, well, there's a chance that they could lose uh, TJ McConnell in the offseason. So, they, could, they could also. Chris Duarte. Seeing how crazy this is, I was just about to say. They could just take Chris Duarte because he adds to a playoff team right now. And seeing, seeing how teams are just reaching. Chris Duarte could go here. Yeah. It's a very high possibility. So Josh Primo is the youngest player in the draft. Yeah. He, he just, I'm pretty sure he just turned 18 like a few months ago. Yeah. They said he's not turning 19 until late December. Oh, okay. No, oh, nice. So he's younger than most high school seniors. He won't be able to party with his teammates for a while. Yeah. The Kobe he will, lifestyle. but it'll have, to, it'll have to be secret. Exactly. <laughs> it'll have to be a secret. But it's another one of those. It's I also mean, San Antonio. So I was going to say. Like, yeah, the nightlife probably won't be jumping. I'm going to say. The, well, the other thing, too, is like Jordan was saying, like the Spurs are another one of those teams you can't really. You got to wait and see because the Spurs have made some really good draft decisions in their tenure. So yeah. you never know what it could turn out to be. Yeah, maybe the greatest drafting team of all time. They're definitely up there. And What if Josh Primo ends up being like the best player in the draft? It's a high possibility. <laughs> that would be incredible. Year two, Josh Primo is averaging like 20 a game. <laughs> He's the DeMar DeRozan replacement. <laughs> that is crazy. The Josh Spurs Primo. are going to go through a pretty tough rebuild, though, here in, for the next. The, I don't know. The, like, they, they've been stuck in the middle for the past three but like, years. DeJounte Murray, if it's Josh Primo that gets the starting nod, Keldon Johnson, who's playing in the Olympics, played yeah. pretty well. 
Lonnie, Lonnie Walker. Walker do they do they still have Derek uh, White? I, I, I swear so. he might. Yeah. I think he, got he had hurt. The, he had that one stretch two years ago where it Ball. looked like he was the future, and then I haven't like really seen him since. Yeah, I think he's had some injuries. Um, but yeah, I mean Lucas Amanic, who's barely played, but they're decent. He's there. Jakob Pertl's kind of a defensive anchor for that team. They're not too bad. I mean, yeah, they're going to be rebuilding. They're not going to be. They're not going to be a great team, but I think I, the West is just. I don't too think tough. they're really rebuilding yeah. because I think they'll be top all right. Eight West is too tough. The guys they've drafted, like they they have guys that they think can like help them win right now. I don't think they're going to like as long as they have Popovich, they're not rebuilding, in my opinion. Yeah. If they once they get a new coach, maybe then will be the complete change. But you think yeah. they're going with the. Their woman assistant coach when Pop leaves. The uh, man Becky. She was got getting shot interviews now, with like I the, think she, yeah. she was getting interviews with the Magic, I believe, and and another team too. But she deserves a chance, but she just hasn't gotten one so far. Yeah, I think I think when yeah. Pop lays it down, I think he'll give her the the job. I don't know. He there was a, there was that stretch where Pop was out for, for health reasons, and he just gave Tim Duncan the head coaching job <laughs> for go, like Tim. half a season. So true. Yeah, I think Becky's gonna be an assistant for a while. Yeah, they they just they give jobs to people with NBA pedigree and like Wes Unsell Jr. just got the job with Washington. True. And Becky Hammond, I'm pretty sure has more experience than him in the NBA. But Washington, Wes Unsell played for the Wizards. Yep. His dad is Wes Unsell. Like here you go. And they just gave his son the job. So the Pacers pick is coming in. I will play it when it's ready. I feel like I, no matter who they take, I feel like I'm gonna like who they take. I mean, they got Corey Kispert here, Moses Moody. Like they got, they, some, they got so many options. They definitely have good, good picks that they could make. So, Cam Thomas. I wouldn't be mad if they took yeah, Cam um, Thomas. Like I've said, me and me and Malik have been pretty high on Cam Thomas. Dude, we said Chris Duarte. I, he's just a he's a bucket. Why wouldn't yeah. if you're going off shooters? Why wouldn't you just take him? Yeah. And he's well, young that's, too. That's why I think it's scary with Cam Thomas. Is Cam Thomas could go to a really good team. Yeah, that's, there's, there's you there's keep a, letting him drop like that. There's a chance he goes to. Uh, uh, I guess not. Oh, the Indiana, they might take a big because I think they might be moving off of Miles Turner very True. soon. So, so they Sangoon. might go big. Shingun time. <laughs> Sangun and Sabonis. Let's go. Oh yes, that that's the four and five of my dreams. I want somebody <laughs> at like the moment. I want somebody like the Knicks to get Cameron Thomas. I'm not gonna lie. But me too. But yeah. the Hawks could get Cameron Thomas at twenty. I think that was yeah. the scary one. Yeah. Oh, but the Knicks have the nineteenth pick. That's what we said before. I think, so that's kind of spooky. Cam Thomas could be a steal for anybody. Yeah. Man, this pick is in, but it's taking forever. Richard Jefferson, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana, who are you take? Please take Sangoon. All right, I heard the ding, ding, ding on the phone, so I'm going to wait just a little bit longer, and then we'll... Listen, they they are taking... A good player? <laughs> a very great player right now. Hey! Hey! Yeah, what a... Nice. Fantastic. Pacers five seed this year. <laughs> oh! Pacers moving up the boards. I'm just, I'm just being reactionary, <laughs> but... That's a great... That's a really good pick. Good call. That's one of my. With that's the 13th pick yeah. in the 2021 NBA draft. Wow. The Indiana Pacers select Chris Duarte. That's oh a great, my that's god! A great pick. <laughs> that's We're good at calling this. Oh man! He lost me a lot of money this March. <laughs> hey man, I, I knew Oregon wasn't going super far. There's Malik Scott. Oh, I, I didn't think they were making it very far neither. Chris Duarte off the board. Yeah, that's Malik's guy now. Off the board. To the Pacers. To the Pacers. Put, throw him right in the rotation. Like he's I said, he's ready to go. Looks like I said, most likely he's going to replace TJ McConnell, unfortunately. Um, oh what? Where's TJ McConnell? I think he's a free agent. And also, Chris Duarte is like a pure two guard. He's not a point guard. I know, but. They um, have, um, what's, uh, what's his name? Holiday. Aaron Holiday. They have Aaron Holiday. I think he's, <laughs> he's most likely going to be the backup. Aaron Holiday. Yeah. yeah. Also, do you guys see uh, Alex? On Tedekumpo's in this draft, the fourth on Tedekumpo, brother. That's hilarious. He's gonna end up on a roster just just for like. He'll be on a summer yeah. league team for sure. Crystal, I, I love that pick. Fantastic. I. Oh, here we go. Negative over here. I'm not saying negative. I just. I'm, I mean, how much better is he than like a Moses Moody? Telling what you want to go for. I know that's <laughs> exactly. That's all I'm thinking. It's like. 
I mean, yeah. be, because it's they're true, because they're trying to get back into like the thick of the playoff race. I feel like I feel like Chris Duarte is most likely the most ready guy. Yeah, that'll yeah, come in and produce that's true. for you. The most uh, NBA ready for sure. Yeah, exactly. So now the Warriors back on the clock to end out the lottery. You want to end here? Yeah, we can end with All this right. one. Moses Moody, Corey Kispert, Keon Johnson. There's some good options for the, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. I think they go. Still a chance for them to all be moved, but. They either go Keon Johnson or Corey Kispert. I said Corey Kispert leading up to it. But yeah. having Moses, Moses Moody fall as far is kind of odd still. A, a good team is going to end up with him. So. So it's, it's honestly better for him. Yeah. If he ends up in a better situation. But I think they could still use a backup guard. Even though I know they have Jordan Poole, but I don't know. Although I'm sure Moses Moody wanted that good guaranteed money for the lottery pick. Yeah. And then we start getting into the... (laughs) Yeah. After the Warriors pick, it goes Washington, OKC, New Orleans, OKC, New York, Atlanta, New York. OKC has like five more picks. (laughs) That's why they went with uh, your boy, Giddy. Yeah. (laughs) The more more I think about it, the more I'm, I'm getting into the Josh Giddy. Like putting him in the mix with them, like the one, two, three being SGA, Lou Dort, and him, it's not terrible. They could still it's take Cam Thomas. Pretty, <laughs> they they could. That's, that's probably ha- having good. him like having him like as a six man that just comes out that and just lets nice. it rip. Lou, Lou. I feel like, nice. honestly, yeah. I feel like any of these teams to get Cameron Thomas, oh, past Washington, OKC, New Orleans, New York, Atlanta, Atlanta at twenty getting Cameron Thomas. They New don't or- need him. New Orleans. It might be hard to. New Orleans could probably use him. Yeah, I think so. I would like that pick for New Orleans. The pick is in. Last pick of the lottery. Who are we, who are we predicting, Joey? Um, I'm going Kispert. Although it's completely I feel nobody like it, knows. I feel like it should be Kispert. Who are you going? Going Keon Johnson. Why? Because he just popped up. No, but that's oh. uh, so that's who I, they're going to go. Athletic. If they go, they could go Corey Kispert. I guess Corey Kispert I, I, feels I'd like go, I'd go shooting. Yeah, I just feel like that's my thought. Is shooting like Ke- think, Keon Johnson think, is so raw. You think Corey Kispert can rebound in the NBA? Yeah, it's all about effort. Honestly, yeah, it's it's all about effort in the NBA. I mean, he's big enough. Yeah, I just don't think he really needs to necessarily. Well, Either. for the he's, Warriors, he might he's just have gonna to. Need to. He's just going to just run around screens. Because they need the a shooter. Because yeah, Draymond, Draymond keeps getting worse and worse offensively as exactly. a player. Exactly. Yeah. But I could see Moses Moody as well. So, but I'm going to go with Kispert as just the, with the 14th see, uh, idea in the 2021 NBA draft. All right, I'm getting ready for the it. Golden State Warriors select Alperin <laughs> Sengun from Turkey. <laughs> Our boy Sengun, though, he's falling, and I feel for him. That's a smart pick. Yeah. That's but, a really that smart works. pick. But I don't think they... Yeah. With the 14th pick in the 2021 <laughs> NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Moses Moody. He got his guaranteed money, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they probably didn't expect him to fall that far. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I started thinking that he might be the pick. It seems like a lot of teams are falling off Keon Johnson. Like, yeah, the, thing, yeah, the, he, the only so, thing he has is the the record for that's the what, He's that's so why. explosive, but like there was in terms of, of game, there was a lot of hype around it. Raw, very. Whew. Okay, we made it through the lottery. We've done a two hour show live. A lot of fun. I enjoyed yeah. doing it. It it was crazier than we thought. Even I think, um, I enjoy Jordan be able to make it out. Definitely, thank you for having me. Unfortunately, Chris, you know has. Other adult priorities, I guess. Yeah. But I understand we've we've done it for two hours. We're winding down, but let's let's just take a moment to appreciate that number one pick one more time. Cade Cunningham is a Detroit Piston. We, we have a That's reason. Right. We have reasons to go to games this year. This this is a good time. Yeah, I'm excited. We're excited. Yeah. We will next... after those top three picks. Things went nuts. Yeah, even more so than we thought. Yeah. Even the third pick. Oh, the fourth. Our fourth. Fourth. Yeah, the fourth. That's what we're talking about. One line. (laughs) And then, uh, so next week, we'll recap the draft. I'm sure more stuff's going to happen. We'll definitely start seeing more trades, I think, as the round. It gets later in the first round into the second round. That's where you see a lot of teams kind of jump around a lot. Uh, So we'll recap all that. We'll 
do the whole draft spiel. We'll recap it, talk about it, and then we'll probably talk a little bit of football. There's been some stuff with the SEC finally throwing out some invites to some teams. And it's it's basically football season. Aaron Rodgers is back. The Packers. He had some things to say. We got to talk about that. Yeah. So we're back in the thick of things next week. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We will see you guys next time. Gabe is here. He is buffed up. (laughs) It's time to get excited, ladies and gentlemen. Peace. He's all in.